So, right, let's go. I'm messing around with this enough, trying to get it working. Okay. Hello, everyone. My internet's a bit slow this morning. I swapped onto my bus Wi Fi. We'll see if that works. It might still be too slow. In this case, I might switch back. I'm just monitoring it right now. <laughs> Got an email. I'm playing with this today. Look what I've got. That was an interesting week, I tell you. Right. Just waiting to see if this actually behaves or not. It's no better on the bus Wi-Fi. I might switch back. Give it a second. Right. That didn't change at all. Actually, make you wonder if it's even switching. Wi Fi should take precedence. Give me a second. Hold on. I need to sort this out before I get going properly. I'm not very happy that it's not working very well. Right. So the Datron is coming along, um, well, hopefully, so that's what displays for. Uh, network settings, where are they? Here it is. Wi-Fi should be taking precedence, and it is. Yeah, it's marginally better. <laughs> it ain't really doing well. Okay. Let me know how this goes, alright? Just tell me in the chat if it's breaking up a lot or something. I'm going to have to reduce my stream settings to try and at least minimise the impact of the bad internet connection, which is rather frustrating. This is why I've seen it 720, not 1080p, because 720 is doable, just, normally. 1080p, forget it. So, right. I've now got it set at 900k, which is much lower than it should be. Probably not too bad for this shot because it's fairly static, just me moving around. But if I, if you see a lot of movement, it might be a bit distorted and stuff. Right, that is not doing well at all. Okay, audio is good. Make it a radio show. <laughs> Pretty hard to shave what I'm doing if it's a radio show. <laughs> well, if you close look at this ball, this is what I basically designed back nice and smooth and flat little focus on it here we go almost almost focus on it come on are you gonna focus come on focus somewhere almost no oh god I hate this camera I've got this Canon not Canon it's a Logitech C922 um, because that's what Dave James uses and I thought oh, the, audio, the quality looks fine Anyway, the problem is with these is the focusing. It's a bit of a pain when you want to focus on something because it chooses everything apart from the thing you're trying to hold right in front of it. There you go. Right, that bit I'm worried about, the enunciators. That's what I'm not so worried about. Um, unfortunately, these LEDs are more like grey than black. They said black, but they're actually grey. Um, I'm putting I'll put an extra film over it just to bring those down a bit so they hide, get hidden behind the um, panel. A lot of stalling. Uh, I don't know if I can do dual internet streams at the same time, Ian. I did look at that some time ago and I couldn't see any way of actually doing it on a Mac, don't forget, right? not a PC. So it's a little bit different. Um, I couldn't find any solutions other than getting a really expensive router. <laughs> um, okay, let's get back off this. If you reckon it's stalling, I'm going to jump back on the standard Ethernet and hope for the best. See if that behaves any better. Um, a lot of stalling? Yeah. Don't want that, do we? Anyway, so... 
the alone shatter part that is 3d printed obviously i've 3d printed like a frame with all the dividers in it so they don't get any bleed through and then i 3d printed the individual enunciated pieces in transparent or just like a translucent plastics pma uh pma pla and then i painted around them to try and get them to be black all right so the surrounds don't light up go on focus on that there you go but as you can see it looks a bit crappy um i'm not a good painter ask my wife um despite doing model making for many years as i was when i was younger i'm not a very good painter my painting was always worse but so that's one of the skills i don't have I'm not sure how well it's going to turn out. I mean, it does work. It does light up. How good it's going to look once it's in place, don't know. I do have a backup plan. Um, in fact, I've got something coming from Banggood at the moment. It's on its way, which may help this solution. Uh, Banggood off, well, you know, do lots of sponsorships and give me review items, as you know. And they have sent me a laser cutter. Well, laser engraver, but it can cut some materials as well. It's really low power. It's like 20 watts or something. 20 watts you know how these are um, so that may help with this situation as well maybe to do some laser cutting um, more you know because much more precise than a 3d printer maybe i can do that well i think it's more precise than a 3d printer uh, i've never done it ian you've got you got a laser cutter haven't you ian what's that yours what's yours like oh you do like you know you've got a laser cutter there but well, it's, it's probably very different this is like it desktop thing it's not very big it's yeah, like a4 size or something like a5 i can't remember hey joe yeah i'll look it, hope it works out as well um we've got some conversions to do on datron so when we get started i'll i've got to convert to 240 volts for start with otherwise i'm going to end up forgetting i'm going to blow the crap out of the power supply so i'm going to do that first is convert to 240 volt that's fairly simple it's a couple of links you have to change then I'm going to pull the display board out, modify that. Um, I'm also going to look at removing the 175 volt supply, or negative 175 volt supply that goes to the display board to make it safer. There's a couple of links in the back that you just take those out and that will take, disable that. Yeah, laser's far better. Yeah, I thought it'd be more precise. Um, Xdevs, how's it going? What's your name, Mixtevs? I keep forgetting your name. I know I've heard it a few times. Um, yeah, I'm going to play with Datron, and I know you've got one. Or you've had one. I think you've done videos on it, haven't you? Um, broken display. This is what I'm planning on putting in, what I've designed. Hopefully it comes out alright. Um, oh, it's like a little desktop thing. It's basically a very minimal engraver it's basically an engraver it will cut some materials you know it's right i suppose but i've got no experience with laser cutting or laser engraving at all absolutely none so it'll be an interesting experience i have to forget the software and that sort of stuff Ilya, is that Ilya? is that is that you pronounce it oh, i'm terrible with <laughs> terrible with names i'll try to remember Try to remember. So yes, so the plan is to try and get this display sorted out. Um, so like, like I said, got to disable the high voltage supply that goes to the display board or the driver board. So that then becomes safe to work on if you're poking around. Um, it's just a couple of links in the back. Buffering again. Oh wow, that's dropped right down. This is bad. I'm not happy with. Oh wow, that's really bad. I'm not happy with his internet speeds. Let's switch back to the other ball band. It got really bad then. This is not behaving well at all. Um, yes, yeah, what I thought, Ian. You know, if they there's a tendency to exaggerate the ratings, isn't there? So I thought well, if I just get choose the most powerful one they offered um, it's probably going to be alright don't know it's probably 20 watts input power output power, I don't know, was it a watt? whatever the efficiency is, I don't know um,
MXA. Oh yeah. You have some rather nice gear there. <laughs> you do have some very nice gear there, Elia. Um, I'm guessing I'm pronouncing it right. Apologies I'm not. Um, yeah, so... I'm rather envious of some of the stuff you got there. Well, most of the stuff you got there, actually. <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, fingers crossed this works. This is being a pain. Let me reduce my data rate again. I just want to get a consistent data rate so it doesn't jump around. Anyway, so fingers crossed this works. But so if this doesn't work, I've got a backup plan. And I may even do it today if this doesn't work out. Where my backup plan is to replace the enunciator section here with a um, OLED display. So I've got some little 0.96 inch OLED displays and it will fit in this area here, it will fit in there beautifully. Um, it, well it should fit, I haven't physically tried it but I think it will fit in there. So if this doesn't work out I could strip all this piece off or make a second ball, probably strip it off a quicker um, and put an OLED in there and I've already written some code in preparation for this thinking that it this is likely to not work um, I haven't finished the code it's sort of 90% there it determines when the segments being turned on so it waits for these these digits there it waits for these digits to be turned on um, I haven't told what to do with each segment yet so that's the thing what I have to do is you know track the segments and then display a program text on the screen that's the bit I haven't written yet um, I thought oh, I'll just won't go much further with that. I'll just wait and see what happens first put the lab in a motorhome drive to a good spot well yeah <laughs> yeah yeah the, uh, yeah I've, I've got enough power I could live stream just fine I've, I've got like 700 watts of solar power on the roof not a problem with power Hey Chris, how's it going? Yeah, same to you mate. Good to see you make it this time. So yeah, it's as, um, this is an interesting week to design this thing because the I normally use Eagle. Right? I've always used Eagle, the free version of my cheapskate. And the um, and that's got a board limitation, right? The cheap version, you know, it's I don't know, is it 100mm or 120mm wide or something like that? So this ball is 175mm wide. Wouldn't fit an eagle. Now I contemplated doing two balls and meshing them together. I thought, nah. Anyway, so I tried learning KiCad again. I tried KiCad about a year ago, I think, and I just couldn't get my head around it. Because, it, no, it's somewhat different. But this time I was kind of forced to use KiCad, and... I'm actually glad it was forced in a way. So basically, in a period of what, four days, I learned how to do KiCad, well, the basic stuff in KiCad, I suppose. Um, made a part in there, footprints and components, stuff like that, so I could actually do the displays, because the only displays I could find weren't quite the same footprint, they were very slightly different. So um, I designed my own part in KiCad and did all that stuff, and, and obviously did the circuit design, laid out the board, and that stuff all in KiCad, so as as quite a steep learning curve because I wanted to get this done quickly. And the fact the boards are already here two weeks later, they're already here. Um, they arrived arrived about three days ago. It took about a week for the board to arrive, which is pretty good. Um, how big is the coaster? You mean on my home, do you? Yeah, I've shown videos on it. Right? It's a seven meter, seven meter one. Um, I'll read the chat again. The older versions of Eagle, which is what I use, because I'm a cheapskate, is it uh, seven point six? That's the one I want on Eagle. So that's still free. Yes, you got the pay version. You got the subscription thing there. You know, if you want to open up the features and not have the restricted board size and have be able to do more than two layers, that sort of stuff, then you have to pay for the subscription. Um, and I don't agree with subscription 
principles. I don't like that whole service. I don't like paying for the same software over and over and over again. If it is like five bucks a month or something like that, yeah, so what? Um, but when it's getting up a bit more than that, not so keen. Um, like my editing software, I, I use Adobe Premiere, right? That's what I use to edit all my videos. The because I'm a cheapskate, I'm using Premiere Pro 5.5, which is pre-subscription. So that's paid for. That's that's it. That's what I use. I don't have to pay for it every month or every year, which in a way is a bit of a hindrance because it means I can't upgrade my computer to the latest system software. I'm using OS 10.12 because that's the latest the Premiere 5.5 was a pull. Um, if I go to a newer system, it won't work. So that's what's holding back from upgrading my computer. Is it worth it? Well, the computer does everything I need it to do, so what do I care? I don't care if I have to have, you know, I would like to have the latest system and keep up to date, but um, not at the expense of paying for something every month. Uh, what are you guys talking about? Um, oh yeah, Ian, I was quite enjoying your repair of that power supply. It's quite involved. I had to do a similar thing. I don't know if you've watched my video or not. On my uh, was it 3647, was it? Power supplies, I did. I did a couple of them. Um, one of those, I blew the display drive up accidentally because I was a bit of an idiot. And I had to do a similar thing as replace the, the IC and program it. Thankfully, I found the software. I believe it was on Idiot's site. I think that's where I found it, actually. I know it's been other stuff I've got from there. <laughs> I've got a little collection I've, I've picked up. Right, so, we should probably stop just waffling and get on with something. So, like I said, I need to do Datron conversions. Internet speed's really flaky still. I'm going to drop this down some more. I'm not happy with this. I'm now down to 700 kilobits. 700. And struggling. I wonder if my phone will do any better. My phone has uh, 4G. It's not the latest phone. It's a, it's a success because headphone socket. Um, now, I wonder if this will do it. This is 4G, but I've also got 20 gigabytes of bandwidth on this phone. There's my wire. See it somewhere? Buried underneath a whole bunch of books. Here we go. Let's see if I can share my phone connection instead. And we'll see if that does any better. I need to find a solution for this. I want to get this speed better before I carry on. Otherwise, you won't get we'll to see much detail. Right, hotspot, turn it on. Trust the computer, of course. I always have to trust this computer because it's my computer. And we'll see how this goes. No, don't download a software update. Go away. Really don't want that now. No, don't. I said no, don't do it. Well, I think it's doing it anyway. Right. Okay. Let me get this set up so you guys, this is bloody frustrating. Um, networking again. Use the phone. Set service order. Make the phone the first one. Okay. So I should swap over to the phone and start using that. And we'll see how that goes. Let's put up high so I can actually get a decent signal. How's that sound? Hopefully. It's getting two bars, that's not great. Oh there, three bars. Ooh.
That's not looking any better. <laughs> I think I'm doomed. It should be switching between networks, but I'm not seeing any difference in speeds when I'm switching between networks. Oh, hold on a second, guys. Let me just try something. Let's put a plug out. If I can find a plug, I'm going to pull it out. It's putting the Ethernet plug out the back of my computer. Right, hey, it's doing something. We're back. It was still using the internet connection. It's supposed to switch automatically. It used to switch automatically. <clears throat> That's interesting. That's using the phone. It's got better now. I've got a green light. <clears throat> but that's going through the phone. Let me call the phone and let's switch on the Wi Fi to the bus and see. Go on, start working, you bugger. Right, this is now on the bus Wi Fi. Okay, we're looking right there. Right, I think I can kill this now. Solved. It's not switching network socket. It's looking a lot better anyway. It's not perfect. Oh, it just dropped off. Oh, come on. <laughs> I don't believe it. Oh, my God. This is going to kill me. Back onto the phone. We'll use the phone. We'll use the phone. Right. I'm back onto the phone. We're going to go with that. Okay? <laughs> this is so frustrating. Quit iTunes, go away. Right, there we go. I think we're good. We're on the phone. This is what's going to happen. <laughs> wow. What? Hopefully this is better now. I can probably even put the rate up again. Let's see what we can do, eh? Let's see how I can handle it. Let's go. Let's go 1,000. It's like 30% more right now. Not even. Come on. Work your bugger. Right. Maybe now. So guys, this is just ridiculous. Right, I think we're there now. But now we're looking good. <laughs> a little faster, yeah, indeed. Right, I think we're good now. All right, that's going straight through the phone. My Wi-Fi, everything's turned off. It's USB cable plugged in, and that's looking rock solid right now. I'm probably put the speeds back up. I've got heaps of data. I'm not worried about that. Yeah, that's going much better now. That's absolutely fine. What a hassle. Okay. Could have done without that. Saying nothing, yeah, good, good choice. Um, yeah, okay, I think we're good now. Now this is going through my phone. My phone is better than my home broadband connection. Uh, interesting thing is the, the motor home Wi-Fi, that is running through 4G broadband as well. Just like my phone is. And yet my phone is working fine. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, well, that original connection, my basic connection, is normally hardwired. So I'm using Ethernet to my router. And then it's wireless internet. Um, but you know, this is looking really good now. This is good. Let's solve. We can stop waffling about internet connections now. I can probably put the rate up a bit more. It's doing really well. Let's go 1500. Don't attempt to fight too much either. 
All right, should be good. DSL, no, there is no DSL here. I'm Ollie for Ollie, so the only internet I can get is either dial up, which is about 5k, or wireless broadband. That's it. All right, my coffee's going cold too. I'm waffling around with that bloody internet. All right, let's get on with something. Desk wide, here we go. We want that view. That's what we're going to play with. So, as you know, we're going to carry on from last week. Here, yeah, Joe, the, um, my computer is normally Ethernet cable straight to the router, directly to the router. So, it should be the best connection possible. I haven't plugged in my automatic switcher yet. I should do that. In case I forget to switch scenes. There we go. <clears throat> yeah, let's fix something indeed. Hey, Peter, how's it going? So, yeah, it looks like the internet so thing is solved. <laughs> Turn the lights on so we can see what we're doing. Mine, one wide zoom. Actually, I've left my automatic switcher unplugged for now because I need to reprogram it so it does this view instead. So we've got to do a few modifications here. Yes, I'm not using my I did not use my danger mouse mode. Oh, that's a fail, isn't it? So we've got to change the links over here to make it T40 volts. There's links on the side on one of these boards. You can't see what I'm doing. Um, over here on this board, somewhere. Where was it? I lost it. Was it over there? Oh, it's. I'm going to, have to relook now. I think it was actually no, it seems resistance over here. I think it was. You need to get it right. Was it these ones? Oh, I don't know if there's these links down here. Or if it's, I think there's these links down here. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. So links down here. Those uh, supplied 175 volts and 5 volt rails. So it supplies 5 volts to the power supply in the back, and well, 180 volts, and but the differential is obviously 175, but 180 volts to the front, which actually comes up to the display ball, comes up over here, and it goes back out um, as required per digit as it's, as it's multiplexing. So the um, these links need to be lifted. In order to get the 175 off this board, and we need to change some resistors and stuff over here and short some resistors out. So I'm going to, have to do some modifications like jumping, take probably take them out and put jumpers in, and then figure out what the value is going to use the other ones to give the correct drive currents to the segments. Now, one of the tricky things I've got here is that this display I've designed, well, what I could currently get wasn't perfect. I've had to compromise slightly. So these are about two volts. These are red, and these individually these are used for these segments. Um, they are orange, and they take a slightly higher drive voltage, which means these are going to. I really want to drive these more current than the display itself. The display is going to be easier to see, but these not so much. I actually want to give these more current than these. So I'm going to have to kind of work out a medium compromise there for what current I end up using. I didn't want to drive too hard, I was going to drive like 15 milliamps or something like that. So it improves the long life, um, improves the longevity. I, I like to not drive things flat out, but because of the dimness of these effectively, because it's got to trans, you know, go through these translucent bits, um, I'm thinking about driving with a higher current just for these, um, but because of those. But I have to, have, have to drive the whole lot because it's each segment as it, uh, as it multiplexes. So I think I'm going to have to use a higher current and drive them harder in order to get these brighter. And then I'm going to have to put a film over this to dim this down and to obviously hide it because right now it really stands out. So yeah, it's a, a bit of a trade off right now. Anyway, I haven't tried fitting it yet, obviously, the original space in there, I've got to take that out as well. So there's a few things we want to get through. Also, I made some notes about how to uh, what the pinout is on this display, and 
what modifications we need to do. Right, some over here. Just some rough notes. Some of these things are just things I wrote down when we doing the last live stream when I was trying to figure out the time. Chit chat. Yep, stream's looking really good now. It's rock solid. Happy with that. That's much better. Okay. I'm just going to quickly finish my coffee and then we'll get on with it. So, like I said, we're going to do this conversion for the power supply first. Otherwise, I'm going to end up forgetting it and I'm going to blow the crap out of it. Nobody wants to do that. Then I have to fix it. I don't want to fix the stuff if somebody else is broken. I want to break it myself first. I'm also hoping it doesn't get too hot, right? It's already 24.6 degrees in this room. And I'm hoping that it stays bearable. I wasn't going to turn the air conditioning on. That's a bit of a noisy bloody beast. Um, I try to avoid turning it on if I can. Right. I'll spin the mic around so you can hear me a little bit better over here. Let's do this. Let's get the power supply. Soldering line turned on. <clears throat> But like I said, there's some link stuff. Oh, should I show you the diagram so, we can show, so you see what I'm talking about? Let's do that. I'll show you that. Uh, top screen, you've already got this all set up for you already. So this is a power supply board in the back. If I click on the right screen, so it zooms and I'm pushing the buttons. And the links are over here in this corner. So that link there is showing 240 volt. And it's just showing 110 volts, whatever it is. So that's the current configuration is this. So I need to take the links out, or take one link out and spin one around. So this like this to make a 240 volt. Okay. Now while I'm actually on this diagram, I should talk about the other modifications I want to do. Potentially, oh, that's not right thing clicking on. That's the browser window. So this is the power supply section here, and this is the 175 volt bit which drives the display normally. Obviously this will be defunct. And I don't really want to have 175 volts floating around. So what I will potentially do as well later, once I confirmed it's working, is well, half off the screen now. Let's just half off the screen. Let's just do that. They can see me. Um, if you want to, I'm not sure it's a good thing. The once I've disabled 175 volt supply on that sideboard, which I'll show you in a second once I find my notes, which I've lost again. Another notebook. Um, I'll probably disable this whole power supply section and take it out completely. I might strip it out and use it and keep these parts as spares. Because right? if this unit doesn't need them anymore because it's doing nothing, if I take that whole piece out and I put them in like a bag or something, you say spare parts for another natron. So if I get another natron which has got this part of the power supply blown, but the rest of it's okay, I can at least repair that one. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to gut this out once it's no longer required. It goes a, a bit against my my, my my usual way of doing things, which is to try and keep things as original as factory as possible and keep it factory. Um, but spare parts, when it's not being used anymore in this unit, I think that's probably more important in this case. Um, what's the other page you want to go to? I'll show you these links and stuff once I find them. Is that the wrong board? That's the other board. Uh, what pages I want? Right hand PCB one five seven almost there anyway. Okay. So this is the links that go from the display board here. These are all the um, or the driver board. So it comes through from that multi-way ribbon and passes through the the right hand board and goes to the front panel, which is through here. So this is all display stuff, and here are the links. Just here. Right, so link one, link two. So one is a five volt feed going to the back, which is a reference for the regulator, and you got one seventy five or minus one seventy five coming back to the front, which does all the display driver stuff. All right, so I can take both those links out, and because that will disable that part of the circuit, doesn't matter. Now, what I'm also worried about if I disable that minus five volts, or sorry, plus five volt rail going to the back there, it may mean there's no reference anymore for that regulator. It might 
free run I'm not sure it's a good thing to leave that off so what you want to do is just take off the 175 link right now take that one out and leave the 5 up reference going to the back and then once I strip all out then it will be won't matter okay. um, over here you've got some 330k resistors which come from the 5 up rail and they actually come over to Alka and Arca. I think that's right and left um, they're like um, references for display, 5 volt references so I'm going to keep those intact so there is a 5 volt rail going to the front display, it's not currently used there's no function for it but what it means is that if I want to have a 5 volt rail on that display um, from this board reference, that's so all the same power supply section I can just use it, if it's low current it might be like doing hardly anything, you know, I might have to do anything, but I might swap these resistors out to jumpers or something like that if I need to do that. But I'm going to, I left those intact. They're on the main board on the display I've built. I've linked them together. Um, so they are there. If I, I see that because if I needed to go to a OLED display, I'm going to need a 5 volt reference to power it. Um, and I could use this supply to do that. Pretty easy. Um, what's the other thing I'll look at? So that's a side rail, so that's the second modification we'll do. Then we need to obviously take the front the um, display out as well, we've got to do all that stuff. So we're looking at front PCB, yeah, front PCB, I'll show you that. That's 148. 148. Right. So I'm just going to show you what I found on this one. Too big. So there's a display, and you notice here it's got maybe you can just about see it. It's got different dots here for the pins, so it shows which pins are actually used. Right, so it's every other pin or every second or third pin that's actually used. Right, so one, three, five, seven, nine, twelve. These are the pins which are actually used on the display. The rest of them aren't actually used, and there's actually no pads on the PCB either, so it makes it a little bit easier to get out. And so it's 56 pins. <laughs> but less than half of those are used. Um, um, yeah. Technical drawing. Yeah, I did technical drawing whilst doing my apprenticeship. Yeah. Well, okay, indeed. I'm just having a quick look at the chat. I'm looking at that for a little while. Oh, I see this next is five bucks. Thanks so much. You're very generous, Peter. I keep giving me money. You're too generous, really. You give me too much. You do enough. Thanks a lot. Um, five five dollars installing, indeed. So, obviously, this is a bit we're doing this look at. This shows the adhesives on the back. Um, don't care about that. We'll be replacing that stuff anyway. And what's the other thing we'll look at? The driver board. Which is page 180. Right, so as we were looking at last time, we need to do some modifications on this board. So this makes it a little bigger. So this is the positive feed from these transistors here. So these are feeding the actual digits, as we discussed last time. Now it's got a whole bunch of resistors in here. Now I don't know why they did this. I mean, maybe it doesn't matter for the um, gas discharges to display, it doesn't actually matter about the currents being a bit off. Um, but I've got this like voltage divider thing going on here. So because I'm taking away this minus 180 volt rail, which is here, that center dial is in doing nothing anymore. It doesn't matter, that's just floating, it won't do anything. So that takes away the whole um, biasing here for the voltage dividers effectively going through here. So that doesn't matter anymore, I'll just ignore that. What I do need to do though is take these resistors out. All these resistors in here, they all need to go. So the AN, which is the resistor networks, those are all from the um, pull down supply, I suppose, for the divider. But the individual resistors are the ones we're going to take out and just short those out. We're just going to bridge them. So we've got a 5 volt feed straight in. All right? So that way each digit should be exactly the same brightness. Otherwise, my digits, which will be different brightnesses depending on how many segments are turned on, because you'll be getting a drop through the resistor. So, we don't want that. So, that covers that part. So, then each digit 
should be the same brightness, assuming the timings are the same. I did see some comments on EV Blog Forum, I think it was, about digit brightnesses. I don't know if I did this part though. It may have been to do with this, I don't actually know. I did look that far into it. Um, one thing I have obviously with my display is I don't have a comma. Right? So the, the 1062 doesn't use it anyway. The line isn't used, so it doesn't matter. If you're, I think it's a 107 one might use it, or 108 ones, they actually use both points. So that could be a problem if you try to use this on one of those meters, because then you wouldn't actually have the comma anymore. I don't know what the comma is even used for, to be honest. I no idea. Mine doesn't use it. I've never seen it come up, so it doesn't matter to me. Um, all the 1062s, I've never seen that come up. But unless maybe it's a certain function, you have to use it, and maybe that's what it is. So obviously I've got the full point, which is over here. This one point is down here where the comet is. So that's what it's lighting up is over here, not over here obviously because it's not on the display. Um, so it's a bit of a compromise there. Um, is there a way of solving it? Potentially, if you modified the board a little bit, you could keep that as a decimal point on the original displays and maybe just put each segment, well each digit, a little bit further apart. Put a small gap in there, like a millimeter or so, in between each digit. And then put a service mount LED as a dot in the middle. So then you'd basically just shift the dot slightly to the right. Um, that would be the compromise there. If that needed to be done. In this case, don't need it, don't care. If I have to do a redesign later on for this particular reason, then I'll, I've got that in mind what I can actually do to solve that. But obviously then you'd be losing a comma. You'd, be getting, you'd have two dots on the spine instead, which could be a bit weird on some circumstances, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what comms is used for. Then, in this section, which you've got to do some more modifications, this is all the negative side. This is what's normally driven by the minus 175 volt rail. So we've got this link one. Originally, I was looking at just putting this link here. And um, that would take that 175 away from all this stuff. And just go from 175 down to zero volts. Done, right? In theory. <laughs> don't know. Hopefully, the transistors will switch. I'll have to swap those out. That'd be a bit of a pain. Um, but if I take it off the side rail, then it takes the 175 volts off this board and makes this board safe to handle then, at least. All right, so I'm going to do it on the side rail instead, as I showed you. I still need to change this link. I still need to make this go to zero volts. I do need to change it anyway. But it means at least I don't have the minus 175 coming to the board. You've got this big capacitor here, 250 volt cap, um, 10 microfarad. I might swap that out um, to something with a bit more capacity to allow for the surges, because obviously LEDs is going to be potentially more current. I'm not sure, actually, whether the, the, the gas discharge or the LED is more current. I don't know. But I think if I change this out as well to a suitable ca capacitor with a large capacity, so it helps there's a, a more of a reservoir for the energy. These capacitors down the side here, they're more for discharging. Um, it's got these diodes across here, so it does like a high voltage discharge through these diodes or something, apparently. I, don't know exactly how it works. I did read it in the description. It does some kind of discharge. I'm going to leave those alone for now. If it looks like it's an issue, then I might short those out and not worry about them at all. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, having them in there means it's probably going to be slower to react. It won't pulse as quickly. But it also means it also mean also means it probably has less EMI generated as well by leaving those in there because it'd be smoother instead of hard switching. So it might be better leaving them in. These resistors along here, uh, was it to R24, R22? Yeah, R22 up to R28, 29, there we go. R22 to R29, those we need to change. So we need to set those up for the required current per segment. Um, so I was going to target about 15 milliamps, and now I think I need to target probably sort of 18 to 20 milliamps to try and get enough drive to get those enunciators nice and bright. Back to chat. Oh yeah. Dinner call. Oh no. Lost Chris. Right. Hope he comes back. The um, So that's the plan. That's what I've got to do. And then also you've got to swap the display up. So it's a bit of work involved. But it shouldn't take that long, really. I'll probably be waffling on a bit more than I could have done after work. <laughs> right, so 
let's get into it. Let's go and swap over and start doing some work on this. I need to turn my desoldering on as well. So, zoom on this. Let's do the power supply section first now. This camera can't see particularly well in detail at this range. Hopefully the bit rate helps and yeah, we'll see how we go with that. So let's get these links out. My, power, my soldering iron's gone to sleep because it's been too long. So I'm just going to warm these up, pop the links out and sort of spin them around. It's not a particularly exciting section. Yeah, tweezers, 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 here we go. Choosing the right tweezers. So I did this on the other ones as well. I mean, it's not exactly a hard modification. Actually, these tweezers aren't sharp enough to get underneath it. I need better tweezers. That one. So the other link, I'm just going to take the bottom one out and spin it around. And then try and get it back in the other hole. Sort of blob on there, get it off. Try and push it through. Try and push it through, I'll say. Let's desolder this thing, probably. I'll need it on anyway. Gee, my iron's a bit cold. I turned it down yesterday when I was doing those SMD LEDs. Something off, I didn't get the holes clear. That's annoying. Come on, get out. Of course, it's not going to cooperate there. <laughs> Of course, I'm trying to bend the thing at the same time, and I doesn't help. And my tweezers keep slipping off. Ah. Uh. Let's clear this out for It's hopefully warm up now. Actually, I might need to put some more solder on it first. Maybe this time. There we go. That was a bit easier. Solder on there. I should even start recording this too. My other stuff in my normal videos. I really should do that, shouldn't I? 
Let's get a fill up. And get some more light. Always do this, I start working, then I go, oh yeah, I should record this. So I'll just uh, change this over to 240 volts. Still got the flux here, but I haven't cleaned it up yet. There's two links here. One normally when 110 volts are vertical links, and you take the bottom, we take one of them out, and then you take one of them and spin it around, so it's linked across the top instead. Pretty simple modification. There you go. Let's give us a clean. Let's have it done. Now, at least turn anything on without risking blowing it up. <laughs> Links out the side next. Now, which one was which? Oh, I've forgotten. <laughs> Alright, uh, what page was that again? Here's my light's gone, here we go, right. Page 151. Also, no, that's the wrong one. That's what I just did. Right, and 157. Right, 157. Link one, link two. Link one is closest to the back. Now I need to disable link two. So it's one close to the front I need to disable. Let's catch up the chat while I'm sitting here. So I've got the disabled front link here. Let's start recording. So I'm doing a conversion for the display on this. So now I've done the 240 volt conversion on here. So I don't have to worry about accidentally blowing it up by having 240 volts coming in on a 110 volt setting. Um, what I've got to do, I've got to remove this link over here. I've got to do some modifications on the driver board over here. Um, now taking this link away, that takes away the 175 volts or negative 175 volt rail which feeds this board over here which then goes back out again to the display. So by taking it out it means this board is then safe, there's no 175 volts along here, it makes the whole thing a lot safer to work on and touching and probing around and stuff like that. So if I pull that link out, that takes that away. We also need to change some resistors on here and also bridge some other ones out and change this link over here as well, there's a link right there which is the uh, normally the 175 volts goes through that link but if we take that link out and spin it around and go to a zero volt rail then that will make that rail go zero volts when those signals turn on so it's be pulling between five volts and zero volts through the resistors can I say through the resistors so um, then we'll do that that's that basically modified then and then we'll go through swap out the broken display with the one I've just built which is just here which is prototype it may I may not end well. Um, these I'm not completely happy with. I mean, they work. It's not pretty. <laughs> I might change that to an OLED. I'm actually thinking about I could put an OLED display in this space and have a dual function. I've got this section normally, and then have a Arduino Pro Mini is what I was planning on using, um, driving a small OLED display which could sit next to it instead to drive the lunch loaders. Um, that's a, my fallback plan. I'm hoping this will be good enough. If it's not, then that's a fallback. So, in the time being, let's do these links. So let's just pull this one up 
That should be all we need to do. This one of the tweezers I put my in. I think I did. Actually, I might get the uh, cheaper, crappier ones rather than my nice ones. Let's try and get them out to this left handed. A link out. So eventually as well what I'll do is I'll change the power supply section. If this all works properly and I don't have to worry about that minus 175 row anymore, I'll actually dismantle this section of the power supply and keep that. And um, I'll basically just use that as parts because it works. There's, there's minus 175 volts around the place. So if it's no longer needed here, I'll, I'll strip that part out and use it as a spares, as a spares packet, I suppose for a future repair potential. And if I get one of these which has got a blown power supply, I could at least then have parts do that. Right, so that's those two parts done. Now you gotta get this board out. You guys see all right, can you? Hopefully. Let's try to check the chat again. Chain myself, that's good. So let's pull this board out. So we've got to oh, start recording. So pull this board out, got to lift that one out. This one which goes to the display driver. There's only 175 volts going through this cable, <laughs> so be careful of that. Now, this one is actually not a connector, it goes through the bottom and it hooks up to the other side. So we've got to lift that off the other side, which comes to the digital board. So I have to unhook it from here. This is what tells it what to do. I've already checked this battery voltage and it's absolutely fine. 3.7 volts, it's like it's, it's, like it's a new one, really, it's, it's really good. So I don't do anything with that. When I did the, when I had the Atrons, I actually tested the battery and see, just to see how long it much, just to see how much capacity it still had left in it. And um, it still had heaps. I was really surprised. There was loads left in it. I could have left it in there, it would have lasted another 10 years probably. It's quite amazing. So that needs to come out of there. So all I've got to do now is take a few screws out, and we've got these little clips here which hold this end down, and uh, we'll be done. We'll get the board out. Now I need a magnetic mat. That's magnetic anyway, but uh, might be handy. So I was really hoping that I wouldn't get a Datron with a blown display or broken display, you know. But um, obviously, it's inevitable if you buy enough of these things. Eventually, you must get a broken display. Is this my fourth one? Is it? I think it's my fourth or fifth one, I've lost count. <laughs> Something like that. That's all off, now it's got to take those clips off. Get my fingers in there. Come on. in there, might be easier. There we go. Right, that's the board out. I don't know if you've noticed, but I, when I put down things like this, I always touch the, the desk first with my fingers to make sure that it's not passing through the board. 
just a little precaution I'll do. Right. The interesting is really slight bit of discolouring just around here, just very slight. That when I was doing the thermal camera testing, it did show us being hot spot around here. So that is obviously um, because that 175 volt supply got the Zeno diode just over here and associated with it. So that is obviously getting warm because of all that section. So that's why it's slightly discoloured. It's almost, it's almost barely perceivable, but it's just a little bit there. It's very slightly brown. So, anyway, it's a good thing I'm disabling that part of the circuit. It doesn't really do any good, does it? Alright. So I need to reference myself here and figure out what I'm doing. So that link sort of come out and go to a zero volt rail, which I think was this pad just here. So there's the Zener, which drops... That's got a, a 75 volt Zener. And that goes between the minus 75 volt rail at this end and the ground I think it was or the output that's what the output's like I'm trying to be now for memory but this one here that pad there I think was zero volt pad I need to double check that it's going to uh, the end pin of that it's coming along here coming over here somewhere I'm pretty sure that pad there was a zero volt pad yeah that one goes to it as well so that's right so all I'll do is take this link here out and probably just fold it over Whichever way it goes, I can't remember which way it goes actually. I need to look at that. I have to figure that out. But uh, yeah, I wanted to put the one side to the zero volt side over here, and that would create that zero volt link, which is all I need to uh, do the conversion from minus 75, minus 175, to zero volts for the drive. And then we've just got to do the di uh, diodes. Then we've just got to do the resistors. Again. Okay. So let's go back up here. I might see if I can get a better, closer shot for this camera for you guys. Um, it will mean moving it. You guys happy with that view, or do you want more? If I um duplicate this view. Hold on, let's do this. Let's make another view, shall we? Uh, hold on. Very zoomed. Look at this. Yeah, let's adjust this configuration and give you a better shot. Um, So <clears throat> you can see the best area of the disc. Something like that, I'd say. Okay, there you go. <clears throat> yeah, hopefully better. Where do we find devices to fix? Basically, eBay for me. I think Ian's got some other sources as well, but um, my, I just scour eBay and try and figure out what I can find. So that's zoom, yeah, so there you go. That's a slight improvement, isn't it? <clears throat> Right, if you want this again, we need to look at what we're going to do. So it's that link we did before. Make sure, link 2, yep, that's the one I pulled out. And link 2, double checking, yep, that's all good. So next thing we need to look at is my other notepad. Um, it's a mixture of, of 
stuff I want to buy for myself or um, items which I think will be good for videos. If it's cheap enough, I'll get just about anything, really, as long as it's something which is test gear related. And it has to be cheap. The biggest problem for me is postage. Postage cost is horrendous. So that's what is the real limiting factor. I mean, I might be able to buy something for 50 bucks, but the postage could be 500. You wouldn't get it. You know, it's ridiculous sometimes. I've seen items there with postage for like $3,000. It's just horrendous. Obviously, I don't want to post it internationally after all. Um, yeah. So, done that link. So I need, need to look at the zero volt supply link. Let's sort that one out first, and that's page 180. <clears throat> so, can I see which way this link is supposed to go? Because the link is currently up here. Is it? No, there it is here. Get the right place. There's the link. The one side of that goes to 170, minus 175, the other side goes somewhere else. So I'm going to lift the right side up with the correct side up. Yeah, there's lots of junk on eBay as well, you have to be careful. Yeah. Um, when I first started doing repair videos, Getting broken test gear was actually relatively easy. It was fairly cheap. Postage wasn't too bad. Um, it was up there a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. And it was not bad. You know, I could buy some quite big, chunky items for reasonable money. Um, but now it's just ridiculous. Even for something small, which you know doesn't cost that much to ship, it's, it's a lot of money to post it. It just the price has just shot up, which is really annoying. You know, I'd like to buy more gear and do more videos on fixing gear, but the cost is prohibitive in most cases. You know, right now I'm actually trying to save up. I'm trying to find a Datron 4700 calibrator, multi-purpose calibrator, because I've got a few calibrators here, and I want to kind of narrow it down a bit and get some new stuff like the my Fluke 5200A that only does up to 120 volts max, but it does high frequency. So it's got some good features there. And it's very good little calibrated that one. Well, not a little, but that's why I did like a 19-part video series on fixing. Then I got the Fluke 343A DC calibrator, which is being a bit erratic at the moment. If anything above about 700 volts, it starts to glitch a bit. So I think I've got some issue with transistors and that thing. Um, I haven't looked at that yet. And I've got my Valhalla calibrator here, which isn't calibrated. <laughs> I've adjusted it roughly, but it's nowhere near right. Um, and that has got some irregularities in it as well. It basically works, but it does have some odd times where it will trip out. So, um, all my calibrators aren't perfect, so I'm, I'm looking for another one. Um, but the Datron 4700 is what I'm looking for, but they're expensive. And it's one I was looking at on eBay, and it's like three grand. Just, you know. A lot of money, so I'm trying to save up to get some kind of funds built up so I can actually buy something like that. Even a broken one, it's a broken one, three grand was, was for a broken one. <laughs> All right, yeah. Um, uh, so we'll catch up the chat. Yeah, manuals. Yeah, availability of manuals, schematics, yes, that's something I consider as well, usually. Um, not always, sometimes I just take a punt on something. And just hope for the best. There's been times I've bought gear, there's been no manuals or schematics for it. But often I'll actually check to see if they are available. You got a 3401A for £80. Oh, awesome. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm just reading the chat. I'm just catching up with all that. Wait till I see the next one. Sounds good. I can get a 3458A for 3K, for 3K, yes, but that only is a multimeter. I need a calibrator. I need something that can generate the, vo the voltages and resistance and stuff like that. Well, resistance, not so much, because I've got the Fluke. Um, I've got the number now. 
545 Yes, I've got it right. 545 I've got the resistance calibrator, which you guys would have seen, hopefully. Um, that works fine. So I don't need resistance, but I need AC, DC voltages um, and currents as well. So the, the Dash 4700 does all that stuff. Um, you got 4200s as well, that series as well, but they, you have to make sure you get the right options, otherwise you don't get all the features you need. So, yeah. Okay, what's the next bit we're doing? We're doing um, display driver, which is page 180, which is where we're at. We've got to figure out that link and put that to the zero volt rail instead of the minus 175 volt rail. Um, because I've disconnected it from the back, I could almost just add a second link and just leave that one in place. It wouldn't actually matter. But if this board ever gets swapped out into another unit at some point by somebody else, it could cause a big bang. So I'm going to change that link. Um, mind you, I've changed the resistance and stuff anyway. That would blow things up anyway, wouldn't it? Oh, would it? No, it wouldn't, because 175 wouldn't be there. So I'm just thinking about future proofing as well. In case I sell this and somebody wins part swaps it, not realise it's been modified. Hmm. We'll see. So, I've got to figure out the link. Then it leads to change of resistors, which needs to short out R18 to R20. Which are down here, that group there. I've got to short those out, then I'll swap those out and put jumpers in. And then I've also got to do R30 to R37, which is this group over here. So all those need to be jumpered out. So let's go back into the diagram, double check in case I made stupid notes and got it wrong. So R18, 19, 20, R35, 37, 31, 35 again. <laughs> Maybe I'm 36, aren't I? Um, 32, 30, yeah, so 36 is there. Okay, so that's okay, 33 there, yep, that's looking all right. So that's fine. And the other thing I've got to look at is changing R22 to R29, which is this group here. So R41 isn't used in this case, so R22 to R29. R41 is that one there, which has been disconnected. Okay. So it doesn't matter, they can just sit there, doesn't have to be changed. Right, let's get onto this. Let's start the link. Check chat before we get up. Hi Andrew, how's it going? Right. So I'll figure out which side of this link is which. the board. So I've got to move this link here. I've got to figure out which side I've got left so I can get that the right way around. So a little trick here, use a torch. So R41, this end, is the pull down to the minus 175 hour. There's a zener. And there's the link that goes between. So that link there. I'm trying to see the actual traces. Can't see traces in the back. It's annoying. Um, it's going to there anyway. So that is that end's going out. And that end there is going to this diode. Uh, this resistor here. What resistor is that? I should make sure I've got this right. Goes to there and they're all arrayed. They're all arrayed on the back. There's a common rail right there across all those. So that will be the potentially the supply coming in, will it? I'll double check this. I need a little monitor over here so I can put the circuit diagram right next to me. That'd be nice. So one side of the link goes to all those resistors and diodes. 
and the capacitor, and the other side goes to the minus 175 up row. Okay, right. And I haven't changed the camera view around. Oh, that's stupid, wasn't it? This one, it'll make switcher. It's oh, it'll go to the one view though. View resumed. Here we go. That's better. Right. Linkers there. Rails down here. The same shot. Okay. Yeah. Kind of. You're not really getting the best view though, are you? Hold on. Just change it slightly. There you go. That should be slightly better. Alright, so there's a link and it comes down from here to here, which links onto this rail. So that is the transistor side and this side will be the minus 175 coming in from over here from that socket. So that's the side I need to lift. Oh, I should be holding that. So the link is here, from that pad to this one. Just going to slightly closer to the camera. So from there to there, that goes through to this rail here, which has got the resistors and stuff on it. And that side goes to the socket. So this side here will be the side we've got to lift off. annoying I repeat myself because I keep forgetting to push record. I could record the stream one but that tends to be a bit flaky sometimes it just stops. Anyway let's wake this up. Go on up to temperature here we go. Come on why does it stop moving? Out of there, and I forgot to record it again. All right, so I lifted that link up. I need to put that to a zero volt rail. Now, I should be able to find one on here. There's zero volt rails over the place, so I've just got to find exactly the right place to go to. Or I'll take the whole link out and just put a new one in completely. There's a zero volt here, but that link won't reach, so I might actually swap it out. But the zero volt right here and here. I might actually put a new link in actually. Do it nicer, put a little big wire loop in so it's a bit more obvious, been modified. I'll do that. recording this again. Right. Put this link here out. I'll clean the hole out after. Okay, cool. So let's put a big link in there which is quite obvious. So it's obviously been modified. I want to try and make things obvious that be modified. That might be long enough. Looks like it. Actually, I wonder if I should trace around the negative rail. We've got the negative over here. See if I can pinpoint exactly where it goes to. I 
It's interesting, it's got some unpopulated parts in here. I wonder what they're supposed to be for. Maybe they're for the other versions. Anyway, just to make sure that's definitely a negative on that side. Probably isn't going to be in shot of it, is it? No, it's not, not really. So there's negative there on that and that there. There we go. Yep, dead short. That's sweet. So it's definitely a negative pad right there, so I'll just jump to that one. Let's strip this off. It's actually like a sleeved piece of wire, so it's really easy to trim it. And this is black instead of red. Uh, red instead of black, sorry. But, uh, yeah. So to make sure that it's obvious it's been changed. That's the only reason I'm using it to the black. I should probably clear this hole out as well. So I can push that through it. Let's see if I can solder it. Maybe it pop through. Yep, it pop through. Yes, and I'm not using any flux yet. Oftentimes I don't find I need to that much. Which is not pushed through this end. Through there. That should lift it on too much, shouldn't I? Make sure it's having a good connection between that rail and here. Is that right? No, this rail. So the probe on the right side would be helpful. Yeah, that's good. So that's that part done. That was the easy bit. So I have to change, was it these? This is here. We'll swap those out for links. So I'm tempted to spot a link straight across the back of each one, isn't it? Tempting. Mm. Check the jack. Uh, yeah, more switch turned off. Yeah, so. I haven't got it plugged in. I did plug it in and I thought, hold on, if I'm trying to do this zoomed in view, the auto switcher goes to this view here. So, yeah, I need to actually, um, my plan was actually to make a little panel. I did buy the bits for everything, I've already got the bits. Um, so I can then tell the switcher what zoom, or what camera mode to go to. So if I'm trying to do a zoomed in view like this one, I can tell it to switch to that view. Um, I need to make that change. I, I really need to get onto that now I'm doing streaming because I haven't done a stream for a little while I haven't bothered with it for obvious reasons didn't need to use it so uh, right so now we go to back to this view so that's that link done so we need to do these resistors which was the where's my notepad gone I'll lift it over here again R18 to R20 and the other one, so I'll do that now. So I'll swap all those out, put jumpers in, Ch change views before I get up out of my chair. Notepad over here, here we go. I'll get the notepads where I can put them in, where I can see the things. Alright, R18 to R20. Which is this group here. So let's pull those out. And I think it was was it all of that group. 30, 37. I need to look at the other view. Hold on. Need 
to look at the PCB layout. 3132, yeah, 37. 3037. So, yep, yeah, the whole group, right. That's on the wrong view, isn't it? It should be very zoomed, not zoomed. I think I need to like, get this down more, like this, or something. Something like that. Okay. So I need to pull these visitors here out, those three and all this group here. All that's got to be pulled out and replaced with jumpers instead. So we'll get onto that. This when something like this comes in really handy. As noisy as it is, it's really handy. I may need to put more solder on to get them out. Sometimes you don't need to. Certainly makes life a lot easier. These will fall out. This one there's been a bit sticky. Yep, a couple there which aren't quite out. And a couple there. It's like around the middle there, I didn't do a very good job getting these ones out. Squeeze down there, like that. Just shoes it. Don't need to suck anymore. Yeah. Right. It's supposed to jump us in there. Uh, Something I wish I actually had was one of those formers you can use for making resistors legs. We should get one of those. Stream behaving still? Yeah, it looks good. Hasn't dropped any frames in ages. That's excellent. Happy with that.
Okay, so that's those visitors. I need to put the jumpers in those ones. This is where I keep all the offcuts of resistor leads and stuff like that in here. Because it's really handy for making little jumpers up. But I do want to get one of those little former things, you know, we can just fold them around and make nice legs and stuff. But I've always just done it by hand with a pair of tweezers. It's always been fine. About this, and oh, it slipped. And show you how easy that was, and I messed it up. I was just making little jumpers from here, so a bit of bent wire. Form a, a form of resistor leg. Don't need it. Push it down so it's pushed right through. Bend the end over. Next one. It's got a big lump of soldering into that one. I won't use that one. I would like one of those formers for bending the resistor legs over. Get one of those things, it'd be like doing these little jumpers really easy. Once you know what size you want, you can just repeat it over and over again. And then drop them all in. That's a bit of a clean up, it's a bit of scungy. So yes, slightly long process this one. Size three, so get it to not fall out. I think I made that side slightly short anyway. Just sold those three in, I'll carry on with the rest. Don't have to show you the whole lot. Yeah, when he wants to drop out, it's pretty annoying. I think we'll use flux on these ones because these are old wires and stuff, so clean those up. Should get the fume extractor going too, shouldn't I? Of course, the last one has fell out. Get back in. Stay there. First all done. Let's clean this area up while it's still warm. So these pads tend to shred a little bit. These are like these makeup pads. I'm trying these ones out for a little while and they're not too bad, they absorb quite well, but they do tend to shred. Do. Chit chat again. Well, 
you guys just stop talking to each other. Keep talking to each other. <laughs> Put some questions here or something, I don't know. And I'll, so when I come back to the chat, I've got something to discuss. All right, so done with the, uh, the first group of three there. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Uh, maybe you can't, but anyway. So that group of three there, we're done. Some of the wires are stiff than others. It's interesting. The little while Chinese components, like cheap resistors and stuff like that, they're some of the best ones to use the wireless on because they really easy to form. <laughs> it's like they're not really made out of any real metal or anything, it's not made out of plasticine or something like that. Make these a bit longer. Making things hard for myself. Just to get so it doesn't fall out, hopefully. This is probably going to burn the finger. There you go. Alright. Drop them over here. Last one I do is drop one on the floor and stab myself in the foot with a ladder. That might happen, I don't know where it's gone. Alright. I was actually half tempted to go through and do all this stuff before I did the stream and get basically all the, the tedious, boring bit out of the way. But I thought, well, I actually do kind of want to cover the whole process and do the whole modification with you guys. So hopefully it's not too boring. <laughs> I really like these tweezers. I've had these tweezers for years. It's in, well, years and decades. Like, I don't know, 30 years I've had these tweezers. Really good tweezers. It's like, almost like pliers, you know. In, in, it's so strong. They're really good ones. I really, really like them. By far my favourite tweezers. I think I need to come down slightly more. ones which are quite stiff. One's already pre cut. Shame it's not the right length.
definitely getting hotter in here. Free to go. Nearly there. The problem with having the window open is you get noise in the neighbours the road. Luckily I live on quite a right road, so it's not I should say that again. Luckily I live quite on, on quite a quiet road, so the noise isn't actually that bad. So you guys got much in the way of plans for Christmas? I, my plan is to stay at home and tinker with things, which is pretty much my plan for every holiday I get, pretty basically. My, my holidays are non-holidays, I don't like to really go and do stuff. Uh, maybe i use that one. Down there. And I suppose a lot of you would be stuck with lockdowns and stuff like that. Where I am currently at least, we're okay. Don't have that problem at the moment. Not at the moment. I'm sure we'll come back again at some point. Sold it up. This is taking longer to do than I thought it would. Using my silver solder as I always do on this test gear. Let's get this fuel shut again. They've got too much rubbish on this one coming up. That can go now. Well, my shroom, I call it a shroom extractor, but it's actually just a fan. <laughs> I did a kit building this thing. No, it wasn't a kit, was it like a project build? I made a little 3D printed housing which holds some filters and this duct fan. Right. So I put all the links in, got a, put some flux on already. Now I'm going to solder them all up. I'll clip those off before I try and clear it.
I could get my brush, but it's on the shelf and I can't bother reaching up that high. I'm just joking. I'll get the brush. Give him one. Make sure there's no bridges. No bits of straight clippings lying around. It's looking alright. Check the other side. Then the flaps of this side as well. Long slow process this isn't it? Well, maybe I should have done some of this before I started recording and doing the live stream. Thought it would be a bit quicker than this, anyway. It isn't, it is what it is. Right. Clean enough. Next bit. Get little bits out of the way in case I get them stuck to the back of the ball. Don't want that. Check again. Where are we? Cheap digital camera. Yeah, I could do that. I do have one. I do actually have a digital um, vernier camera. Yeah, could have done that. And so I can. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's been in the workshop, yeah, my, much like mine. I've got two weeks off work now, so um, my, I finished on Friday. Locked the plant up and shut it all down. You got a 3D printer? Awesome. What did you get? Oh, Trox, he already answered that. Tronics XY2. I've heard of the Titan Extruder, I haven't heard of the Tronixy. That's a new one on me. I'm not exactly a 3D printer expert though. I've only seen a, you know, a few. Um, maybe one can or two. <laughs> Holiday's building a bloody bench, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've got some projects to do. I've got to do some work on the motor home. Like the, um, Right now, the curtains are in there. They were velcroed on, right? Use velcro, which works okay, but the adhesive deteriorates because it's stick on velcro stuff. And I'll go put some curtain rails in there. I've already pulled the roof lining out to do it. Um, I'm, I'm good at half doing jobs and maybe not finishing it. Anyway, so I got the roof lining up. <laughs> pulled it out last week. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that needs finishing. So, the next thing we've got to do, yeah, put the curtain rails through the roof lining. Yeah, then I have to really make curtains as well, that's so fun. My wife was in that bit though. Well, I'm actually rubbish at sewing, which is she's not too bad, she's actually pretty good. So, we change R22 to R29. So, this is the thing we've got to do now is figure, figure out what resistances we need for these ones we've got to take out. Um, which ones are those? Hold on. Oh, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Right, it's all apart from the right hand one, I've got to come out. 
So now I've got to change all of these resistors here. So to that one there, all the way through to this one, that's not the very end one. Although I could take that one out too, it won't actually matter. Because that was part of that 175 volt rail. Well, minus 175 volt rail. I keep forgetting to say the minus part. Um, that's quite important. The, I could take them all out actually and just leave that last one unpopulated. It wouldn't really matter. I could just leave it. It's not going to matter. Now it's got a zero volt link instead. Um, that doesn't actually matter anymore. It's curious the way I've done that. Actually, there's a slight oddity here. Where they've um, done the rail on the back. It didn't actually continue all the way along, so you've got the rail here for these resistors. And it stops here. But on the front, then it links across. That's weird. Why don't I just carry that rail there along? Just here. Strange. Hmm. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'll need to pull those out. But that minus 175 volt rail oh, that needs to come out. Maybe. I, I could leave it there. It doesn't matter. It's not going to fetch anything anymore. So let's pull those resistors out, and then we'll look at what we're going to put back in. Make sure we get the right places. There's actually a spare space there. There's actually one resistor placing which isn't actually populated. That must be to do with the high digit versions. So this is six and a half digits, maybe it's used in the, the seven and a half digit ones. Something. I don't feel like the solder desoldering properly. I think it's got a double sided ball. I don't think that one's gone properly, I might have done it manually. It's certainly a lot easier with this. Many years of struggling trying to get parts out. Well, getting the part out wasn't the hard bit. The bit was trying to get the hole cleared afterwards. It is a little bit of a shame that you know I had to convert the voltages on this whole rail as well. Uh, it would have been nice to actually just use the original 175 volt rail and um, that stays in. And not to mess about with all this stuff, but uh, it, I mean it could have been possible. But I didn't want to have 175 volts going there anymore. You know, if it doesn't need to be there, then get rid of it. And my soldering iron's shutting down as I'm picking it up. Pick up. Come on, don't go to sleep. I'm using it. No. Look up. There we go. Come on. We must be sold.
Anyway, I've got to clean those holes out. I'll be sitting there trying to figure out why I can't get a part in there. That didn't help. I'll have to put more solder on to clear them out. That's counterintuitive as that is. some time to pass through. Uh, this one might need even more solder on it. It's all disappeared to the other side of the board. Uh, no, all good, all clear. Right, that bit, done. Check the chat again. Hey Helmet, how's it going? Right. So we're coming along quite nicely so far. Now it's got to put new resistors in here. So, we this one. So we've swapped out all the ones here. And those ones there, they all been replaced with jumpers. We pulled out all these ones here, 21, uh, sorry, 22 through to 29. So now to put resistors in here. Now they figure out the current somewhat. So we've got a 5 volt row. And I want to run these things at 2.1 volt-ish. Um, that's kind of what the ratings are, 2 to 2.1. Although the individual LEDs are rated 2.2 volts. Um, so I want to drive those a bit harder so there's a bit of a mismatch there if I do get well when I do eventually get the orange digits because these are red digits when I do eventually get the orange ones the drive should be similar voltage level so it will help even it out but I need to drive it quite hard so I think I'm going to try and go for 20 milliamps um, overslept oh yeah okay cool well to be honest helmet you didn't miss that much I've been just going through explaining what I was doing that sort of stuff so I'm sure we'll catch up pretty quickly um, but I recap stuff. I mean, I'm also recording video as well for when I do the proper repair video for this thing. So I'll be publishing a repair video on this display. So then I'll obviously you get the better footage and, and the close-up views and stuff. Hopefully I get it in shot. And that's just now slightly off. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, so yeah, I need to figure out these distances here. So I've got five volt rail effectively. Because the negative side is now 0 volts, not minus 125. Positive side is still 5 volts. So I need to work out that drop. And once I figure out what the hell I did on my phone, it was here. <laughs> That's right, I'm using it up here for my internet connection. Yeah, maybe I won't do that. Um, <laughs> online resistor calculator. Okay, you guys can tell me. Can someone, someone jump on there and figure it out. So, wait, whoever is told me about an app for the phone, that's a really good little app. You told me about that, that's really good. Um, Electro something or other. So I need to work out the resistors for the LEDs. Assuming a 2.1 volt LED forward resistance drop, or well, forward voltage drop, running at 20 milliamps. Alright, so 5 volts, 20 milliamps, 2.1 volt drop. Someone work that out for me? I think it's about 180 ohms, something like 180 to 200 ohms around that region, I think is what I had worked out. But that's based on a 2 volt drop, I think, and 15 milliamps. So it might be slightly less. So probably 150, 180 milliamps, uh, 180 ohms would be the one I want, I think. Maybe slightly less. Come on, who's going to beat me to it? Come on, who's going to jump in and do it? On. 5 volt supply, yes. Yeah. So I've got a 5 volt supply rail. I want 2.1 volt forward voltage drop, 20 milliamps drive current. 
I could look up myself, but I thought to give you guys a chance to chime in and see if you guess it first. So I, mean, I would like to drive the EDs hard. I mean, 20 milliamps is as hard as I want to go with them. You know, I don't want to go any harder than that. I was going to do 15 milliamps, but because of the individual EDs having a higher forward voltage drop, I need to drive the whole lot harder to compensate for that. Oh, you're going downstairs, no problem. Near 150 ohm, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, because I worked out about 180 to 200 ohms for a 15 milliamp draw, so I knew it would be slightly less than that. So, Okay, let's see what I've got. Remember to commit to an voltage drop. Yeah, true. I don't know what that is. I actually have no idea what that could be. So what yeah, yeah, that what will do, though, is that will cause a slight reduction in current. So, yeah, I mean, I'll probably be... Uh, I have to scope it as well because it's being multiplexed. I have to scope it to find out what those would be. Um, yeah, as long as I'm ballpark, I'm not too worried. So, I'll go for 150 ohm. I'll see what I've got here. I've got exactly 150, you also have 130. One fifty ohm, one percent. Issue some of these. Yeah, so I don't know what the clutch emitter voltage drop is, so I don't actually um, I can't factor that into the calculation because it, it could be almost nothing, it could be significant, I don't know. These were high voltage parts, high voltage transistors, because they had 175 volts across them. So I don't actually know what they're gonna be. I mean I could look them up I suppose. You know, I'm gonna look it up. Part number is a 2N5401 on those parts, and these are 2N5550. Which one's which? Which is the one we're worried about? Well, the, we have to use them all because one size digit drive, one size segment drive. So it's, I'll say that again. So 2N5401, 2N5401, and 2N5. Yeah, triple five zero. Two and triple five zero. Those are the transistors used to drive the digits and segments. You reckon two point six drop? That, that'd be a base emitter drop, though, wouldn't it? Not collector emitter. Wouldn't the collector emitter be a bit less than that? I don't know. I've never actually worried about it before. Um, Two in was it say five five oh one data sheet? I like to get data sheets whenever I, I realise I've got a part which I might need anyway. Um, and triple five zero. I'm gonna grab these data sheets anyway. So triple five zero. It's uh, shove this up the top here. I want let's get. Top screen. We'll shove this up here. Yeah. Right. So, meter base. Okay. Let's see what we're looking for. Voltage, car voltage, 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 current gain, saturation voltage. Hundred fifty millivolts. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what these switchings are actually like. I don't know how hard they are. Uh, 
base emits of saturation voltage is one volt on that part. Basement saturation one volt, saturation voltage point two on the clatter emitter, and about the same, pretty much. Yeah, um, anything else down here? That's another consideration actually, can the digits, can digit transistors handle the saturate, uh, saturated current if it is driving all, all eight digits, all eight segments rather. Um, which one do we need to know for that? Hold on. Which of the digit drivers? That's the 13 or 2. Oh, that's all jumped around, isn't it? Okay, that's set there. <laughs> Not that lot. This slot here, those are digit drivers. So those are the handle the highest current. And those are the 5401s. So the 5401s have to handle the highest current, potentially 160 milliamps. Potentially, actually, no, it wouldn't actually do that because the decimal point is either the decimal point or not, or nothing at all. So it would actually be at most 140 milliamps. So let's pull this back up. Uh, 5401, which is this one here. Maximum ratings, let's say here, 600. Okay, so that's fine. <laughs> Right, I'll put them there. I'm not seeing this step here for the um, clear-to-emitter voltage drop. I'm not really. Am I? Am I missing it? I'm just, does it mean this one here? Is that what it's meaning? Five milliamps, fifty milliamps, so clear to. It's going to get half a volt drop there. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I need to find a saturation for clear to emitter with the higher current. On the graph. So current basement of volts. Who are we going to be? Up here somewhere. Well, I hate trying to interpret things. Right, clear to current milliamps and voltage. Does that matter? I don't care that way. So it's going to be up here somewhere, isn't it? It's base current's going to be like 10 milliamps. Hmm. May not matter, I suppose we'll find out. Let's look at the 5501s. And those are 
about sort of going to be 20 milliamps, aren't they? So re relatively small. Is that 20? Yeah. Yeah, I'm wondering about that bloody main digit driver. I'm wondering about that. Or PNP types. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. So this digit drive, which I'm not really too worried about. Let's save this, save these bookmarks, or save these data sheets. Every time I book a piece of gear, and I have a data sheet for. It, a component, I always store it. Always. If I don't necessarily mean I'm going to look it up for my files initially every time, I always keep a copy if I can. In case maybe it's no longer available later on or something like that. You know, that's been times I've had that problem. Right. So, digit drive, the sorry, your segment drive can go, digit drive. Uh, And continuous current is 600 milliamps. So the device itself should be handled the current. Base emitter saturation is 1 volt. Clear emitter saturation 0 0.2 to 0 0.5 at 50 milliamps. So that's where we're getting back down to this then again. Wasn't it? Let's try and tip it this thing. High base current, lower meter glitter, meter voltage. So I'm wondering about that. I think I'm inclined to give it a go with what's in there. If they blow, they blow, I'll, then I'll replace them. <laughs> I mean, they're only multiplex, so it's not like it's constantly on. Each one only is on for one, let's talk, two kilohertz pulse, and it's 11 digits. So it's you know, only on one eleventh of the time. So it's not like it's constantly on. It might be right. You have the drops okay not as I know. Yeah, base count, yeah. Yeah, the base count is the thing I'm not sure of. Can it drive it hard enough? Um it's been driven by what? What's it been driven by? This thing here. One four five one five. I think it's one five. I did look at that part before, didn't I? Let's look it up again. Let's see what that says. Uh, I should really use the word data sheet in my lookup, shouldn't I? 4 bit transparent latch, 4 to, that's it, 4 to 16 line decoder. Let's shove this up here. So, this is the thing that's driving the digits. Um, input output current 10 milliamps. Oh, yeah. 
It's pushing it, isn't it? Yeah, that is pushing it. I bet drive current. Ah, oh, look at this. Five volts. What are these numbers? Are they... Oh, milliamps. Right. Really? It must be one that, surely. Have a high output low. Of course, they're low, they're low drive, so. That's half a milliamp. Hmm. That's concerning. Yeah. Hey Ian, you had the same idea I did. <laughs> Checking the device which is running it. Um, could I use a Darlington array? Yes. I don't have any. Ironically, I've got some on the way right now, actually, for something else I'm, for, I'm fixing. Um, Let me just check something. PNP. PNP. What do I have around which is PNP? Give me a second. Oh, I've got some 2 in 5401. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot some of those. Okay. Let me just check. PN or PNP? I'm thinking of something else right now. Let me check the stats on these. We've got a whole bunch of these. These are KSA 733s or 2SA 733s, whichever way you want to look at it. I've got two different types here, they've got different pinouts. The KSA has got a different pinout. Let me check the stats on these. I probably have a data sheet here, so I'm for actually. Let's pull that out. Would you believe I don't have the arsenal for those? I'm going to have to look it up. Probably stay in here so I can sit on that. Let's see what these can do. One set of inch lights. Clip to count, 150 milliamps. Yeah, it's marginal, isn't it? Yeah. This is part I've got lots of. Which one have I got? Hmm. Why? Well, that's no better, is it? It's about the same. <laughs> right, let's save this style sheet now. I've actually got a copy of it. Let's find something else. Oh, 
Those are totally current, I've got many of them. Um, I think that's a MPN. Yes, yeah, MPN. I'll use that one. Three, I don't have a huge amount. Two of oh, I think there's a massive thing. No, I can't use that. Case of theme I've got on hand, isn't it? Really? What the? That was the KSA I looked at. What's the 2SA I've got here? I've got some of those, not many. Music C. C series. I've only got eight of those. Not enough. Yeah. Loads of MPNs, not so much PMP. What to do? What to do? We've got to shout again. Oh, I thought I'd get the windows out of the way. That's C337, I don't have any of those. Um, Worst case, I blow that and I blow that up. <laughs> yeah, but it might be a cascading bloody failure. The you know, amount of times I've fixed things, there's been a cascading failure. Well, one part's gone, that's blown the next part, that's blown the next part, and you have to follow through. And, and you, know, you work your way through it and go, oh, what's, what, you know, we find the first part which is blown in the chain, you go, oh, what blew that? And you find the next part's blown, and then you find the next part's blown. Uh, that's happened more than once. Um, what's looking at here? Oh, this is the KSA. I didn't look too deeply in this one because I saw that milliamp figure. Um, if it's a current. Okay, where is it? Base current. Here is it? It's here somewhere, it must be. Oh, hold on. You spot it, Tommy. <laughs> Just curious. I don't want to change these parts since I absolutely have to, so I'm willing to try them. I do worry about cascading failures though. Because I'm worried about overdriving that bloody chip. But base a bit of voltage. Fits a current. I'm not seeing base current. Anyway. Well, this is the closest thing we got. It's pretty much a linear line, isn't it? Although it does start to curve and go more vertical, so that's near 0.8 drive. With those gains as per this, because that's the one I've got. Well, we'll try as is. I think I'm getting kind of sidetracked from resistors, aren't I? <laughs> so let's put these resistors in. <laughs> then we'll carry on. Right, let's move this back out of the way. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Uh, let's... I think I've got this data sheet, let's make sure I've got the one for the chip. I think I've already saved that one. I must have scrolling, must have good. All right. Um, MC one four five 
one, four, D. Yeah, I already got it. Cool. Right. Yeah, saved. Okay, I can go. Right. Let's get back to this. Put some resistors in. Power supplies are easy to fix, don't worry about those. <laughs> Power supplies to me are, are like a, a bit of a relief when they go. Yeah. I mean, that's only if it all the digits are running anyway. I mean, if you've got an 8 on display, then you might have an issue. <laughs> if you've got a 7, not so much. I think the worst digit would probably be 6, would it? Nine. Not sure where the actual symbols are put up. Actually, right. I'll turn the camera back on again because it's gone to sleep because I was looking at it for so long. Right. So I'm going to put some 150 ohm resistors in here. Hang on, eight, two, four, six, eight. Eight. Yes, that's right. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the digits, not the signals. Four, six, eight. Into them. So hopefully these will give enough drive. Um, to get enough brightness out, we'll find out. They they should do. I'll be surprised if they don't. Just depends on the switching of the transistors as well and that sort of stuff. So I think there's a Chinese part, so his legs for awfully thin. <laughs> they probably are 150 ohms. Probably are. At least this is the easy bit putting these in. And yes, I'm trying to make sure they're all the same way around just to keep the OCD happy. You have to do that. Yes, I will be trying to get them all lined up as well. Trying. We'll see how we get it. They'll be kind of lined up, they're not really too fussy about that part. I worry about the colours being the same, so it's easier to read rather than whether they line up together. But I will mess with it anyway, just to be sure that you know, it's tidy. I want it to be tidy. They're kind of tidy. I'll buy a flux on this one. I don't think. We'll see how it goes. I'll try soldering one first. Then my soldering one's going to sleep. Uh, so it's not, Matt, yeah, it's not that much more to do now, really. We've got to, once these are in, then I think that's that board done, isn't it? That's that board finished with. There was that link one on this board I was going to take out completely that's one we did before but switch the zero volt rail that's done that, that's just notes okay um yeah i think the next thing will be then to take the display out and actually try it out i see how these solder see if it's okay with that flux or not yeah this can need some flux okay 
trade off of that is more noise. Well, this fucks for ages, it's expired. It's expired in 2016. Still works absolutely fine. <laughs> this is Antec NC559 V2 TF for tacky flux. Maybe it makes it harder to clean off, but it seems seems to flow just fine and it works really nicely. I'm not too worried about the parts hanging off the board a little bit, so it's a bit of clearance. Um, if anything, it's a good thing where you've got resistors which are going to be having current going through them. Starts of them getting hot and uh, damaging the board if they were to overheat for some reason. Which you probably shouldn't do anyway, not to have much current. A little bit too much solder on a couple of these. Fly through too well. Not just the one, really. It's right. Look, there's a whole bunch of wild leads I could have used to do the jumpers. I should have done these ones first. And the other side. Okay, 
Happy with that. That looks right. Looks like that's all done. Happy with the look of that. Looks fine. This, this is getting sticky. <laughs> I need to give this a clean as well. The handle's getting sticky. It's got some flux on there. So I'm going to switch the camera over. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look. BCF327. Uh, um, yeah, I don't have many of those kinds of PMP parts. Quarter watt resistor is pushing as well. Yeah, well, because it's multiplexed, I'm hoping it'll be alright. Um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Two and two nine four. Okay, so we've got some options there as far as parts. So I could, if I need to, I can buy some parts in and and, and, um, and get something suitable. You here for magic smoke? Yeah, yeah stick around. <laughs> no promises, but uh, you know, you never know. Right, it's um, let's get on with this. Let's chuck this thing in. Put the ball back in. Pull the display out, and we're getting close to testing. Not much longer. Well, actually, think about those um, those resistors, those, those uh, 150 ohm resistors. They're on the segment drive, so they're only actually doing one segment at a time. So it's not like it's doing a whole digit. So that should be okay. Oh, I was going to change that capacitor too, wasn't I? So it's got a better reservoir. Yeah, let's do that. Or forget. What do I have? Oh, I've got loads of them. Twenty-two thousand. You reckon that'll do? Uh, maybe it's something a little smaller, eh? Um, Looks the same, I've got lots of. You don't want to be too big as well, eh? I was just going to have a big inrush current. I've got lots of 47s. The current one is a 10, so it's still four times the size. Smaller smaller physical size. I think I'll chuck that in, eh? Give it a bit, little bit of a boost up. It'll help slightly. Both ends are still kind of stuck. Come on. Come on. Fall out. This one in. There we go. Must be a solar blob on that one. So negative end, that end. Don't forget. So before I move on, I'm going to put this ball back in again. I must have forgot I'm going to I'm swapping out this capacitor that was here, this 250 volt cap, which is 10 microfarad. 
I'm changing it to a 47 microfarad 100 volt cap. Voltage doesn't matter, but it's 47 microfarad, so that's what I'm going to shove in here. Just to give it a bit of an improvement in storage capacity because it's got a drive LEDs now instead, it might require a bit more power. So I thought I'd swap it out with that and see how that goes. Check chat in case you guys have got any other opinions. Yeah, that's why I say KSA isn't really up to the job. That's why I'm sort of not really up to putting that one in. I might have to buy something specific for it if I need to. Yeah, yeah, let's try and. You reckon 10 milliamps? Well, I've got to change resistors now. <laughs> we'll find out, won't we? We'll see how it goes. Any opinions about this capacitor I'm putting in? You think I'm putting in something too small? Should I put in something bigger? I do have these ones. These are 68. Uh, what's this? 10, 16 volt. I actually kind of put this in instead, actually. I'm inclined to put this in. In rush current, less of an issue actually. I think no, let's go to smaller value. Only because of the voltages. Let's put a 68 in. So I'll get the other part back in the drawer. It used to go in the drawer. They have 100s as well, actually. They are 35 volt parts. What do you reckon? What, what do you reckon I should do? 68 or 100? Or 330s? I've got 330s too. I don't know, what do you reckon? Do you think in rush current is going to be an issue? That's 330 microfarad, 16 volt, I could use these. I'm actually more tempted with this one, to be honest. I think that shouldn't really be an issue, would it? Not really, it's on the main supply rail. Yeah, it's a swack a massive one in there. Let's just have a 330 in there. Yeah, she used the 330. Let's use that. I need to change your mind. I'm going to put in a 330 microfarad, 16 volt. Because this is basically now just across the supply rail. So all it's really doing is reinforcing the supply. Which has got some tantalum on here for, which is doing a little bit anyway. So this is going to be between 0 volt rail and the 5 volt rail, effectively. So all I'm really doing is making it a bit more robust. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to put this one in instead. So it's a 330. It shouldn't be any harm going big on this one. I was kind of overthinking it. So that'll go in there instead. I've probably got it in the right around. We'll find out when I turn it on, I suppose. Okay, now you can put the thing in. Chit chat. Okay, that'd be cool. Go through there. Hopefully, pop it through there. There we go. Pop the clips down. Make sure it's not being hooked up. Screws back in again. This 
It's usually when you got these little washers, when you put the last screw in, you drop it and it goes into something awkward, you have to completely strip it down again. It happens so many times. It's always the last one. Every time. So if you, if you start the last one first, then you should be right. I'm sure Ian knows what I'm talking about. I'm not tightening yet, I'm just putting the, all the parts in so they're aligned. Plug the driver back into the main board because if I forget to do that, we'll be wondering why it doesn't work. Put it back on. Right, now we're to the point we've got to take the display out. See okay there. Uh, is it C18? The answer is I think it's 18, it might be 10, I'm not sure. It might be 18. Let's just look at the layout, that's how you want it. Layout. That is also hard to read. Um, I think it's 18. Yeah, that one here. So I think it was 18. Pretty sure. No, I'm going to double check the orientation of the cat because now I'm suspicious I've got it wrong. I think it's okay, but I've got doubts. No, that's fine. I've got it right around. Yay! <laughs> Bonus. Doesn't doesn't go bang when I turn it on. Right, that's all good. So, let's get this display out. Here we go. It's up to 27 degrees in now, it's not too bad, it's just slightly hot. shot for you guys, kind of. Slightly wonky, isn't it? Yeah, right. Steps I'm leaving for work. Now, that should be okay, I guess. About there. <coughs> right, let's get this display up. Might have to put some extra solder on. We'll see how we go. Now, not every pin is soldered because um, it only uses a fraction of them. Less than half the pins are actually used. <coughs> So that makes it a bit easier. That stick can go. In fact, I might move it to I don't know, over here. How's that? This is particularly stubborn to get out. What I'll probably do is just cut the legs off the display because it's broken anyway, it doesn't matter. I 
Maybe halfway. Uh, Right, this is going to fall out. It's got double sided tape on there still, but I need to make sure it's actually going to come out. So we'll cut through that tape. Let's get a spudger. Side. It's going better. Okay, bits of glass going everywhere. So we went on the floor. That's helpful. Don't stand on that. There you go. That went on the floor. So it looks like it's basically out. Yep, everything's moving. Okay, there we go. Last piece of foam. And she's out. Such a shame, but oh well. What are you going to do? Well, what I'm doing right now, isn't that really? So that foam, it's almost the right height for the thing I'm going to put in. Let's get this. And hopefully it will drop in. If the holes are cleared out enough. There you go. Look at that. Beauty. So, hot wires are still standing off the foam. I'm not sure what distance I've got from the front panel. I do want a little bit of clearance because I don't actually want it rubbing on the, well, I don't want this bit rubbing on the back of the film on the display, on the panel here. But I do want to put some more film on this to make it disappear more. Because right now it's a little bit obvious to see it. Yeah, try and make it in the seat. Okay, so I need to put some more film in here to make that all disappear. Don't get it so the lighting's not on it as well. That's probably helpful. Right. But anyway, so far so good. It actually goes in. And there is a clearance gap if I have it right there. 
there is a gap, so that's good. It means I've got plenty of room to put some film in there to thicken it up and to try and hide all that. Hopefully that making it go too dark. But I'll worry about that once I get the thing actually working. So I should probably put some double-sided foam on this to stick it down. Do I solder it in first? <laughs> Oh, the baits, isn't it, eh? I reckon I should just go for it and just hope for the best, eh? I think I should just do it. I think I should just stick it down there and assume it's going to work. Check, check. Yeah, David D on the maxing it maxes each digit so each digit is switched um, it, so it simultaneously switches all of the segments for that digit and the digit is going to display and switches rapidly between them all at two kilohertz so it will just it will switches the eight segments um, at once as it's switching the digit at the same time Yeah, I can't use a socket, unfortunately, because there's, there's not enough space in there to do it. I did consider that, having a plug-in, but there's no way to do it very easily. I mean, maybe it could be possible to have front-mounted through, through the service mount from the back or something, like that, on some weird kind of pin-header arrangement. I was going to go there. So I'm going to risk soldering it in. I'm gonna, I've got some more tape here somewhere. I'll get some tape. Um, I've got some strong stuff. I don't really want the strongest stuff though, but that's what I've got. So I'll just chuck a couple of small bits on. I'll replace the original bits of tape. This piece here is still there as a support. I might just peel that off. I don't know, maybe I'll just leave it there actually, resting against it. I mean, it's right by the hose. It shouldn't really flex at all. So let's get this off. I'm going to place these bits here with some new stuff. I'm not going to put it in exactly the same place. Oh, I could do. I don't know. Is this going to be a bit of a pain to clean off us all? Get the adhesive off. Old foam tape, always nice. For the sake of doing a nice job, I should really clean all this off, shouldn't I? Hopefully, that's taking the traces off at the same time. Too much on the traces, that's any problem. Time to expose them. So I'll put the alcohol on for soften the adhesive. It's marginally better. <laughs> I'm not going to put the tape in the same places anyway, I'm going to put it in you know, slightly different places so it's not actually an issue there. Um, I do still want to be able to get to it through the spudger, so I can scrape it back off if I need to, which is why I put it like they did. So it definitely needs support in the middle. Definitely needs that, because if it gets pushed in the front panel, we need it to be braced. So with this stuff, let's cut some shift off this. Come on, 
cut through. Put it slightly high, it might be right. High onto one side, sounds like a plan. One layer is not enough, only two layers because of the header spacing. Just to make it awkward, of course. No, probably too thick. Oh, that's about right. Two lives looks about right. Off first, Scott. Come on. And I'll do a bit in the middle here as well. Um, yeah, put it in the same place. Right. Let's put a thin strip there. pretty much cleaned off anyway. Not long now. Get to find out very soon whether this works or not. I really hope it does. <laughs> Go on. What am I forgetting? I remember as soon as I got it stuck down. That's when I know I've forgotten. Right. That's stuck down. Push it under the header as well. Alright. So I've just stuck down the display. I'm using double sided tape. i use a couple of layers. Stuck a bit, colour bits over here, and one more piece in the middle here, just to help support the middle of it. And that's going to make sure it's bedded down on the display here, on the with the back panel, or the back of the front panel here, so the header is actually resting against it because the height's actually back exactly the same with the tape to line up with the header. So it's all the same height across, nice and uniform. And um, now it's got a solder thing in. Let's throw this away, shall we? Or shall I keep it a bit longer? Chuck it to one side for the time being. Try about getting bits of glass everywhere. Because that's always fun. And the neighbours decided to make some noise. It's like it's just about to go out on his boat, so I won't be here much longer. I'll wait till he goes before I start recording again. Okay. Missing, okay. Just like the seven drive transistors have bases have capacitors, yes they do. Wouldn't that mean strobing the segments as a digit is selected? Potentially, yes. It's probably there to create a delay. So as it switches over, you don't have an overlap. Now, it's actually something I was considering when I was doing my Arduino code. I'll, I'll show you actually. Um, once it opens up. This is in case the enunciator part doesn't work. Once it comes up, I'll show you it. It takes a little while. Uh, where is it? Um, Datron, enunciator display, code. Here we go. Just make sure there's nothing in here which you guys should be seeing. Nothing there was, it's all fine. Okay. Here, 
case. This is the code I've written for Arduino in case I need to use an OLED in order to display the enunciators if the enunciator LED section doesn't work as well as I want it to. I'm doubtful, which is why I've written this code. It's not finished. So this is basically, as you can see, version one. Um, it's using OLED display, using standard code here. I've set up the segments and definitions on here, so I know which pins to use. If I change the Arduino I'm going to use, I'll just change the pin definitions in here without messing around too much. It's got some holders for text. I'm not really using this bit yet. I haven't written no code, but this is the text that we'll be using. Yes, I use strings. Uh, I use strings. Um, shoot me. <laughs> the um, so these will be holders for whatever the nature would be, it might be millivolts or ohms or whatever, that will hold that text. And I've got multiple lines here, in case I need them, I don't actually know what I need yet, I haven't written that part. This is setting up the interfaces, so I see you're monitoring so I can see what's going on, I'm doing bug testing and got wire begin. I'm not sure if the default will work, I might have to def define them explicitly, I'm not sure. Pin mode, setting the inputs here, because it's going to monitor all the digits, well it's going to monitor the two digits we're not worried about, and all the segments so therefore it's using all of these inputs now I've, I've included segment I even though this unit doesn't use it um, future proofing just in case I ever do this on a 708 uh, 1081 because I do want to get a 7 half digit one one day all right and this is just some initiation stuff just getting it started up so this gets the input states first this is getting the I'll show, I'll show you the loop first shall we the loops down here always get last millis stores a millis value on each loop so it doesn't get it every time so if you're doing multiple checks for millis it actually makes it slightly faster because you've got a value stored instead of checking it every time um it's not negative or it's the same i always do get input state so it's actually checking for the segment and digit drives and then if what i've got in here as far as i've written anyway is it checks the text to see if it's the same as the last text if the text has changed then it will update the display, otherwise it won't do anything with the display, it will just keep it as it is, it just reduces the overheads. And this is this bit that does a display, this just tells it what to display, where, what font sizes, stuff like that. It's all passed through to it. And this is where it stores the last used text as the current text. Well, current text as the, as the last used text. So that way it knows where it's been changed. So that way it only updates if it needs to. And this is a bit that does the input states. So this is what's grabbing the inputs from the um, segments and digits. So we've got digit inputs here for digit 11, digit 12, uh, sorry, digit 10, digit 11, which are the unshattered digits. And then I'm reading all the segments as well. So what it does here is it checks that the input state is high. So it checks for the already read value for, for the digit. All right, so it reads it up here. And then as it gets down here, it reads it again. Reason being, in between those two times, it's read the, the segments. I've done that to create a delay. So that if there's an overlap, kind of delay anyway, it's a, it's a double, double check. So if it happens to be reading the digit inputs and the segment inputs as it's changing digits, so it might read the digit here, and as it's read that, it's changing to the next digit and changing the segments. And so what I'll do is I'll read the digit, read the segments, read the, read the digit again. That way, if it's read it here and read it here as the same thing, and it's read all those, it should be the correct information for that digit, not the next digit, not the previous digit. You know what I mean? Now, I've done the same thing for both digits here. So this is as far as I've got. I haven't got any further. All I've got is my notes in here saying what the digits actually are, what they display. Right, so um, what the segments are. So each segment is these enunciators here, which you probably can't see too well on screen. So uh, that's as far as I've got. So all I've got to do basically in this in these sections for each one is duplicate myself, which you're not supposed to really do, you're not supposed to repeat yourself in code, but sometimes it's just simpler to write it. It's only a small bit of code. Um, what I do in this bit here, for this digit, I'd say if A is turned on, then I know it's an AC sign, you know, um, or, or whatever. You know, if it's G, then it's a micro sign. So, um, and the same for this one. And then I do those, I'm just telling it to display that digit or that text. And when it's combinations, because sometimes you use combinations, um, such as K here and ohms here, we use that combination, or volts and AC at the same time, I can do that in a code and it'll just display those on the OLED. So this is what I might have to write if 
this display doesn't work as well as I want. So anyway, we'll try it as it is first and see if it works. If it's okay, I don't have to worry about this, but I'm not confident, which is why I wrote this code. This didn't take long, I don't know. I don't know, probably half an hour, so to chuck this together. It wasn't a big deal. All right. Um, no glass bullocks here. Hey, GB, how's it going? Could try contact as this, yeah. Anyway, so let's solder these in and we'll try it. We'll almost mark the truth. I think I can turn my desoldering gun off now before I forget. <laughs> of course, now I've turned it off, that means we're going to have to take the display back out again. <laughs> Almost guarantee it, can't you? Right, <sighs> let's um, reorganise my desk. Let's get a bit messy. Let's tidy up a little bit before I start because it's just getting ridiculously crowded and cramped. That's always a bad thing. Holder. You guys see right, suppose you can. Right, it's time to solder this in. Put the solder on it. So it's stuck down and hopefully it will work. Fingers crossed. Well, anyway, solder it in first, then we'll find out. In fact, there's probably actually, to be honest, there's probably enough contact resistance on this right now to turn it on. Because these are touching all the sides of the pads and the through roll wires and stuff. It could almost work now, actually. A solder in. This is going to be the awkward, my arm's going to be kind of in the way. In fact, it's going to be in the way quite a lot, I think. Hmm. Come on. I don't know if this is flying through the ball well enough. Hope it is. I'm quite pl pleased that the um, cell phone has kept the what, internet connection going for the live stream. It's a solar up here, but I was doing the solar.
Let's just hope I didn't miss anything whilst doing this. little bits of solder floating around while I did this soldering. Try and get those off. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Did I miss any? Don't think so. Right. It's good. Keep it clean because that's also going to preempt the uh, karma gogs kicking in. The, as Dave would say, Murphy will show up and say we have to desolder it all again. You must guarantee it, can't you? Shreddy that one, I don't like that one. Yeah, it kind of clean. <laughs> That's right. Oh dear. So, is it going to work? Have I been wasting the past week? <laughs> well, it's not really wasted, is it? If it, you know, even if it doesn't work, it doesn't really matter that much because it's still been a fun thing to do. This will need to be wound up. That's off. I need to kind of prop this up a bit as well, don't I? Things like this, it actually like props up on the front panel. I don't like that. Um, actually, let's do this one. Slightly higher. There right. Yeah, okay. Okay. Right, let's power up for the first time and see what happens. Uh, have I forgotten anything? Let's double check my list. Pull power, change the length of zero volts, change the resistors, shorter the resistors. Okay. Yep, I think we're good. I didn't have any other notes about things I needed to worry about changing. Are you ready for the magic smoke, people? Before that, I'll check chat again on my live stream. You ready? Now, the only reason I was looking at the Arduino helmet is the um, if the enunciators don't display well enough, if they don't come out cleanly, um, I'm not I'm not sure they're going to come out a nice visible um, enunciator. You know, I think they're going to be really sharp. Uh, if they if these just don't look very good, basically, then I'll look at changing to an OLED and then use the Arduino to drive that OLED to 
generate a nice display instead. That's what I was thinking I was there for anyway. Okay, power on. Start recording because it could be magic smoke. Ready? What voltage you got? 245 is too high, drop it down a bit. Yeah. 328 sounds fine. Okay. What's going to happen? Let's turn some of these lights off. I was being drowned out. And maybe this one too. Right. Here we go. Hey! We have that bit. Well, that part's working. The voltage enunciator is on. Is that the correct one? <laughs> it is. Now put the panel over. Slightly better. So you can see the voltage on the but it's not very clear. That's what I was worried about. So AC, and that says millivolts. That's not right. <laughs> I made a mistake. Oh dear, what have I done there? Anyway, okay. Mind you, it says millivolts. Maybe it's millivolts AC. No, it can't be right. That'd be millivolts AC. I've got the AC and the millivolts back to front on here. How do I do that? Yeah, look at that. Whoops. <laughs> First mistake. But the announcer is not very clear anyway. I'm not liking that. The display itself looks good. Nunchat is not heavy. Uh, Kill it, Ohms. You see the dots come up at the word error because normally on the Datron displays that dot is up here but the R so it forms like a curled R um, so I knew that would happen but I thought it probably won't really matter it's I think it's fine you don't really notice it that much it's okay so this is on kilo ohms and the ohm symbol is basically not visible which is what I was worried about is these not being visible to see um, let's chuck a jump on here. So what's going on here? If it said error, it did. So what's happening over here? Recording. So what's happening over here is the enunciator is not coming up unless I shove that in. Then you can see it. So that's interesting. The is that normal behaviour? I should actually check my other that one. See if it does the same thing. So do voltage just move volts there. That's the AC one. Yeah, but the milli, milli and the AC back to front. How the hell do I do that? <laughs> so now DC one hundred says volts AC. Whoops. Uh. Oh well, <laughs> maybe it's part of the manual where it wasn't clear. There was some bits which are hard to read, so I'd actually look at that, the M and the AC. I should check those to see if the manual has got a, a discrepancy there. Or it could be I was looking at the hard copy manual before I got the 1061, not the 1062. Maybe there's a difference. That's possible. Um, it is fixable though. I could actually just cut the tracks on the back of there and fix it it wouldn't be a big deal with those tracks are on the front so I should be able to get to those if I need to um, maybe we'll see like I said I'm not happy with that display anyway okay check the chat well yeah the display is working you can actually you know, see something now. <laughs> I'm hoping that that display was the only thing that's actually wrong with it. I could actually test it. Oh, that DC is jumping around over the place. Even with a short link in, that's interesting. But it's likely that all the passes need doing. It probably needs fully recapping. It's very likely. Um, if I only had a DC voltage source I could use to put into it. Hmm. 
much like the one I have sitting right here. Right, let's do auto ranging, one volt. Still jumping around, so that's interesting. So it probably does have a power supply problem. Right, so I've got the PDVS2 Mini hooked up to it. If you haven't got one of these, make sure you um, check them out in johnston.com. Go and check them out. Go and buy one. Excellent little things they have. So this is generating one volt, and I've got this auto scaling, one volt scale right now. And you see it's fluctuating around a little bit. So this isn't this that's doing it, it's the meter. So even when I had the jumping jumper on here, it was still doing it. So I think that needs a recapping on the power supply, but it looks like the basic accuracy, the calibration, is looking like it's bang on. So let's go up to 10 volts. Same deal, jumping around. Accuracy is looking pretty good. Input filter. Yep, not bad. Not bad at all. Now this particular meter, actually what I was thinking about is that that very last digit may not even be used for anything. I've never seen that one come on on mine anyway. Maybe there's a function that does, but yeah, it doesn't really do it. So that part of the display is working well. The enunciators I'm not happy with. As I expected, I didn't think that would be good enough. So that's not right. That's come out nice and clean. It's nice and bright. It doesn't look like it's over bright, you know, like it's being overdriven. So that seems fine. And um, yeah, not bad. So what's happened to that bloody digit? Well, I've got that one wrong. That's interesting. Check the chip. Uh, cheers. Check if everything's getting hot. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll still let, it, let it run for a little while. Give it a chance to warm up. This place is really clear. Yeah, it's come out really nice. Um, the D and E look like they're getting brighter and dimmer. You reckon? I'm not sure when you said that relative to what measurement I'm taking right now. On the first digit, sorry. Okay. I'm not really seeing anything here. It looks pretty even. All the, all the digits look really even to me. Maybe through the um, frame rate of the camera and everything is maybe flip, picking something up, syncing with the um, update time a little bit or something, but to me it all looks really good actually, it looks really even and accurate. They look about the same brightness right across to me. Um, let's try to say 5 volts or something, 3 volts, there you go, close enough. One volt, back to that. So you're referring to this digit here, were you? I never remember which bloody this digit switch. <laughs> it's noted here somewhere, hold on. Um, what page is that? Next one. What did you say? Uh, digit D and E. D and E. So it's the bottom and the left one. Okay. Come on, flick over. I might have to increase the voltage very slightly to get that flick over. Actually, now you say it, that bottom left digit is very slightly dimmer. That is very slightly dimmer, you're right. The... Um, the E segment.
No, that's good spotting in. You're right. That very, yeah, the E on that first digit is very slightly dimmer. It's showing up more on camera, actually. The camera shows it up a lot more than what I'm seeing. So it could be a timing thing. It could be to do with those capacitors I got in there. Um, okay, let's go to next range up, and we'll try and trigger that. So it's the same digit. Is that what we're doing? Is that a digit? Oh, I lost track of which digit it was. Which one we're we looking at? That digit there. It's a digit over. Okay. And that's now a point instead. So that's why I couldn't see it here because it is the one which showing the decimal point. If it shows decimal point, it turns that digit off. Okay. Right. So like that, I'm seeing it here as well. And still there. So yeah, just that one just there. So is that related to me potentially making an error over here though? Yes. When I change between AC and DC, that digit gets that uh, segment gets dimmer. But is it because of that turning off? Because it loses the digit off here. Interesting, that's flicking up and down with that digit there. It's changing in brightness. So it's not perfect. It could be to do with those capacitors. Or it could be a voltage drop from a transistor. Is that enough to bother me? Probably not. I'm seeing these brightnesses change slightly as well. So I think it's the timing thing. I think it's the switching switching timing. So I reckon it's to do those capacitors on those base of the transistors. So if they're more on, the capacitor is staying more charged. If it's more off, then it shuts off. That's what I think is happening. That's my guess. So I'll just record some video on that. So it's been pointed out to me in live chat that the this digit here has got the brightness changing very slightly. And I'm looking at these ones in this particular sequence, and I'm just seeing this changing very slightly depending on what this digit here is doing. So I think because each digit is individual, there's um, capacitors on the base of the transistors that's still switching. And it's actually powered through those capacitors. So I'm actually thinking those capacitors are affecting the timing very slightly from discharge, you know, just basically an RC circuit through the transistor itself. And it might be the timing's changing very slightly because of what digits it's displaying. So if it's displaying a different digit over here, it's on more. So if, if I'm showing all zeros here, when that says all zeros, that's full brightness. When it says a one, that's dimming down a little bit. So I think that it's due with the switching of those transistors where the capacitors are in series with the switching lines. Not a big deal, it's only really subtle, but um, it may mean those capacitors have to be changed or removed altogether. All right. John James, you was here, really. Got anything else to contribute, or shall I just ban you now? Unless you're going to be friendly in chat, that's fine. Right. Now it's been on for a little while, so warmed up. As you guys are suggesting I do, I do want to check the temperatures and see what's going on with that display board and see if it's actually, or display driver board, and see if it's behaving okay or not.
turn this back on again. This point is down the bottom there, 45 degrees. I think that's all this up here, is it? Get this out of the board. So we've got nothing really going on here. Right, let's check these properly. Let's try and get it all on camera shot without getting reflections of everything. <laughs> So what's that one that's down there? That one's 45, what's that? Yeah, it's that chip there. But I, I don't really feel it. Barely anything at all. That's the driver. It's fine. That one there is not getting on at all. Okay. So I checked the temperatures on this board using my little thermal camera here. So before it's getting hot around here, that's at 175, sorry, minus 175 volt supply was coming in, which I've now removed. I've put a jumper in here and it's all fine now. So there's no heat around that area really. Nothing really shows up. You can see it a little bit just here. Um, where is that? It's reflection. It's reflection off the back of the panel here. So ignore that one. Um, the rest of the chips and stuff look fine. And basically there's a little bit of warmth in these ones here, not much, we get closer, we're at 30, 34 degrees, they're not really being stressed at all, but it looks, it looks fine. It's been on for about 10 minutes now maybe, something like that, it's basically 34 degrees, hottest point is 33.8, and some are cold than others. Also depends on what's displaying at the time as well. So actually, it's actually um, increase the display digits on this. Let's make it display a lot more. So it's working a little bit harder. Right. And we'll see if that changes those temperatures at all. So it's displaying a lot more digits and uh, working a little bit harder. Basically, the driving area is looking fine. I mean, say those transistors, it's a little bit of heat in them. Is it transistors? It's not even that, it's the resistors getting warm. These ones there. That's what's showing up. That's the resistors. So, yeah. That's fine. I mean, for resistors to be 35, yeah. That's nothing wrong, nothing at all wrong there. Transistors, nothing at all. We really need to look at my lines a bit better. Pay more attention to what I'm piking. <laughs> and... Down here we've got a hot spot, which you can't really see because of the light reflecting off. Just there. That is the MCM6810P, which is not really related to the driving circuitry at all. So that's just a controller. And that's fine, that's like normal temperature. That's obviously what it runs at. If what we would be worried about is this chip over here, that one. Because that's got a drive with the transistors and that seems to be well, basically cold. If I put my finger on it, you can see a hot spot in a second. I'll take my finger away. There you go. So, nothing. Absolutely fine. So, the only hottest thing on here is basically those resistors, which is expected. They're going to be, you know, getting a little bit heated. I've changed slightly now. I've put the other um, digits on there. We've changed the profile slightly there. Got a little warmer. But still 35 degrees. And I'll see that chip down there, which is 46. All fine. Oh, we'll do some editing on that video, cut some bits out, waffle out. <laughs> oh wow, I'm still going. Yes, I am. But it works. Six hour live stream. I've done longer than that. <laughs> yeah, I've done, I've done more than that. Um, so yes, I'm still going. The reason being, it's actually worked. You can see a little better. So, yes. 
it's been a fairly good result. Now, I think my longest live stream has been, I don't know if you've got, I think it was about seven hours. It's, lot, it's quite a while. Fully brighter than the grass discharge. Actually, yes, I think it is. I think it is brighter. But I, don't think, I do want to put some more filter material in front of it, which will make it a bit darker. Um, just to hide the actual fact, you, got, you know, you can't see the digits in. Um, yeah. Yes, that's working all right. So the only thing I'm not happy with is the, is the enunciators. I mean, they're there. I have made a mistake there. Um, I've seen I've got two lines swapped around. So I want to look at that and see what's happened. So I've got the um, milli symbol and the AC symbol back to front somehow on the enunciator. I don't know how it happened, but it has. So I need to figure out why. And the physical diagram is much easier to read than the um, electronic one. Three or four streams join. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's change views. So it's actually come out quite nice. It looks nicer to me than it does on camera. The camera makes it look a little bit odd. I don't know. It's not, it doesn't look as good on camera as it does to me. Um, it'll probably look even better once I put some more filtering in there. Actually, I've got to get that down. I've got something right here. This just slips on the front now. Got some sheets of it. What colour do you want? Uh, purple. Let's put purple in there, eh? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. We've got this kind of yellowy. Both basically got the same colour. Let's slip my eyes in. Let's see what we get. Does that do much? Does it change much on camera? Not a lot. Only helps very slightly, it's not really dark enough that one. Let's just shut the purple one in there, see what that looks like. Yeah. That actually takes that down quite nicely. Strangely, that purple one actually works quite well. That almost hides all the digits. Hmm. Something that hasn't shown up yet is a plus and minus symbol over here. Ah, oh, I've forgotten a modification. That's why. One of the modifications I've forgotten. Um, yes, because they need a 5 volt supply rail, was it? Am I thinking it's wrong? I don't remember. Uh, uh, yeah, the plus and minus not showing up. There's something else I have to look at as well. But that purple looks quite nice. Actually, it works really well. Try and get the reflection off it so you don't get blinded by that. I don't know if you can see it on camera. The difference between those. It makes it more red, but that actually works quite nicely if I do it out. So the purple might be going. Also have a red. Being as these are really these. That actually doesn't work as well as the purple. Yeah. Purple works slightly better. And also have a green. Because you know why not? Nothing's got to do much though. So. That cuts it right out, look at that. It makes it really dark, so that's obviously not what we want. Definitely don't want green. Which is what I expected. So the purple or the red look quite good. They seem to be pretty reasonable. Let's put a blue one in there. Blue, look at that, mostly basically go black because it cuts out the red. So not unsurprising. So we've got some options here about which film we use. But the purple one looked like it did the best job. Let's just compare the red and purple again. So 
the purple made the red really stand out and it's taken away a lot of the yellowy of the back there of the actual digits they basically almost disappear they're still there you can still see it but it's really really minor and brightness doesn't really come down that much it does come down slightly the red one brightness is basically not affected with that one but that doesn't filter the, back, the background as well as either so I think between those I'd, I'd probably go with the red one just because it keeps the digits nice and bright oh, I should have been recording that <laughs> so I'm playing around with these films I'll just try different films and I've tried different ones and the red one here and this purple one do the best effects for filtering out the background of the display, the actual you know, the front faces of the digits. So the purple one does quite a nice job there, takes it all right down, really hides the background really well, but it does take a lot of brightness off the digits as well. It does take quite a bit off, you can see how much clearer that gets just by doing that. And if I do the red one instead, it helps slightly, the, the digits stay basically the same brightness, there's very little brightness change on the, on the segments but the background is still very visible as you can see so I'm kind of torn between which one I'd use don't I? Right. so let's figure out what's going on with these bloody segments, why do I get these segments mixed up? Um, Plastic conductive sheet. Conductive sheet, really. Yeah, I had thought about OLED. The problem with the OLED is um, getting everything to fit. <laughs> and you need a big display, big long display. So I had thought about that. So I actually am planning on using, well, based on the fact that I wasn't not happy with the enunciators, which is what I expected. I wasn't expecting those to come out really nicely. I just think I didn't do a particularly good job of making that part. Um, one thing about doing is denunciate apart is get rid of that plate I've got in there now and put an OLED in there and run an OLED as the enunciator and so you can just display whatever you want on that then um, and then you know where you change ranges or whatever you're doing it will, it will show up nicely then um, um, Instagram plots, etc. Yeah, as far as like GPIB control, I have absolutely no experience. <laughs> I've never done it. I do want to do, learn it, how to do it. I've got some downloads and software, and I've got some cables and adapters and stuff like that. I do have the gear. I just haven't sat down and done it and figured it out and tried to get it working. It's just not something I've ever done. Um, I do want to do it. What about orange? Well, the, the one of the ones I had was like a yellowy orange, and I had a yellowish and an orange one. Orange is what I do want to use. Obviously, these digits are red. Um, the digits I do want to use are orange, and they're not available until next year. They're out of stock until February. Um, so, I just used red. Yeah, gee, boys, these must just spend a few red on nights here. Now you do everything over GPIB, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen you doing a lot of stuff and, and um, logging and everything. Do an awful lot of work with that. Do some very good work. Quite impressed by your abilities, actually, to be honest. You're also a very clever guy. Right. This thing. Now, what is the mistake I've made? So I want to compare what's on the screen, which is, which I'll show you up here. So this is the segment section up here where it displays which segment is using which one. So I seem to have the aims here mixed up with the, oh sorry, the AC here mixed up with the millis, which is here. So let's see how that compares with my physical manual, because that's what I was looking at when I was doing this. Was a physical manual. Once I figure out where the page has gone, 
because the physical manual is for a 1061. It's not the same. It's not exactly the same unit, but it's very, very similar. And for most things, it's identical. And as you can see on here, it's not easy to read these these digits here. So I've got that says second B and the AC symbol that matches up, and the millis is segment G. That's not an A. That's a G. And that's the M. Now maybe I've interpreted that as an A. Maybe it is an A, and that's not a G. But I think it is, because you've got that shape, and then you've got that shape here, which is actually an A. On the manual, I've got here is much more easy to see. So obviously I've got all the other digits correct, otherwise I wouldn't be displaying correctly everywhere else. So I must have got all the others right. It's just this interpretation just here. So if I've obviously I've read these notations correctly, otherwise all the digits would be wrong. And that's not happening, everything else is looking fine. So it's just these enunciators which I've somehow got mixed up. Um, let's look at Kike. Right, let's put this at the top window so you can see it. And make it bigger. So here's the enunciators. And these are the rows I put them on. So I've got the M and the AC. It's A and F. Oh, that's G. Where do I get F from? F is K and Meg. Oh, look at this on the ground, sorry. That's the, that's the label above it, sorry. Get that right. So A and G. There we go, A and G. They're, right, they're the right ones. It's just a mistake in the manual then, because these definitely match what's in the manual. That's correct. So A is the AC symbol, and G is the M symbol, well, the MIDI symbol. They're correct. But also, what we're seeing is back to front. And this is the driver section which I've done for the plus and minus, but it doesn't seem to be working. I'm not seeing the plus and minus here at all. And this is just really badly lit, which is quite possible. I'm not seeing a plus and minus here at all, for some reason. Um, I may have made a mistake there too. So what, what I've basically got is, I think I'm getting used to the keycap is you put your mouse in, you zoom in, it jumps to the center. I'm still getting used to that part. So what, for the plus and minus, we've got double LEDs in parallel, which means obviously twice as much current. So what I'm doing here is I'm driving them with these transistors. So the display driver for the digit is driving a transistor pair, um, a PMP then an NPN, to try and um, drive that correctly. So when a digit's on, it turns that transistor on, which is driven by the digit power, so D1 in this case is digit 1. That then goes to that resistor, which may be too big a value. I just took some random guesses about values that may be too high. Maybe both these resistor values are too big and that's why it's not coming on. Um, and that should be then turning this on through these resistors. So 100 ohm in this one, 33 ohm in this one. Now I've got 100 ohm in this one. Of course, this is the minus symbol, which is only lighting up two LEDs. This one here is doing the plus symbol, which is lighting up four LEDs, because I've got them in series, effectively. So, so that's the minus symbol here. So it's the digit supply. So it's the positive anode coming in, and then that's switching the negative to turn those on for the negative symbols. And then the positive symbol comes in from this one, so it effectively puts them all in series, so the whole lot lights up. So you get plus or minus, one or the other, because that's how it's switched anyway. Um, anyway, that's what I designed, but it ain't working. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's go back to this, the uh, as a schematic. Let's go to the actual PCB layer. Let's pull that up.
Now this is going to be a bit hard to see because I put some mask over here. Let's, uh, let's turn that off. Turn that off. Yeah, this isn't going to be easy to see. So, this is obviously the end display digit here. Let's turn the, actually I might turn the screen back on again, it might be easy to see. Maybe, ish. Things I've done is I put these white areas around the LEDs. On the prototype board I didn't have that, I've just got black. And what I've actually done is I've hand painted the, around the LEDs to create a bit better of a glow. So it reflects more light. Um, that did make a difference to what I could see when I was testing. Um, so, yeah, so in, I've gone out and gone back and done a revision 1.1, which has got this white around them. But it looks like I might have to do a slight change. I'm actually, um, I hope the white jumps everywhere. The, now I need to look at this and find out what's going on here. So that's the milli, and that's the AC over here. So let's turn this, this silk screen back off. So that's the LED here. And this LED here. So that's the common, which is from A. Let's go into that one. Was that right? Yes. And because that's the A pad here, which runs over to the A digit. So that's definitely correct. Right? So it's definitely powering that LED on that one. And that pad there, where's that go? Over here, which is. D10, digit 10. So could it be I've got it hooked up to the wrong digit? That's what I didn't check. Back to paperwork. I do have it noted here somewhere. Uh, where are they? Over here. Digit 10 is the AC symbol. So that is correct. So digit 10, yes, and, and line segment A is correct for the AC symbol. So why is it wrong? It must be a mistake in the manual. And that's the, uh, go here, yep, so that's the milli digit here. That's also on number 10, which is correct. And on the G, which is correct. So what I've made is correct. So it must be an error in the manual. Bugger. Isn't that annoying? You're sending people Raspberry Pi as you really go. So what's involved with that then? Um, what's, what's the Raspberry Pi aspect? Because so I don't know um, anything about it really. Um, I've done a little bit of research, not much got confused about all the different options and ways of doing things and was like, oh, okay, I'll look at it later on when I actually need to go and worry about it. Same as using KiCad. I couldn't figure it out when I wanted to figure it out um, until I needed to do it. And then that was motivation to actually dig in and figure out how to use it. Yeah, most things, I suppose. So you can spy in the labs and steal their vaults. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I, mean, I did buy some green displays. So I've got red and I've got green. They both arrived. I thought red is closer to the original and the Enunciate LEDs, they're orange. I did get orange individual LEDs. Um, so they were, I was trying to mimic the original display as much as I could. Um, PC rank switch, turn off all zone field, yeah. Well, from what I can see on this layout, what I've done is correct. You can see I've got the correct symbols and notations here. And they came from the schematic over here. And they've definitely got the correct labels on them. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Why is it wrong? <sighs> Odd. So anyway, it looks like I'm not going to use it anyway because I'm not happy with the way it looks. I mean, I can see it from here. 
potentially it's usable. Is it great? No, I'm not happy with it. Um, yeah, it's a bit disappointing, but oh well. I knew that that was flaky, which is why I started playing with the Arduino code. So now I need to make a note in the Arduino code that these aren't actually correct. So let's pull the code up. So down here, for digit 10, it may affect these ones too actually, those digits might also be wrong. Um, ohms and percent. I have to check to see if those are mixed up as well. So that is now not AC, <laughs> that is M. And that is AC, not M. <laughs> uh, okay. Those LEDs are already fairly bright. I think they were 44 MCD. I think that's what they were. Was that the digits? I can't remember now. I don't remember. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I need to consider it, but. The actual enunciator block I'm not happy with, you know, it's just, the concept was right. When I first built it, it was not too bad. Uh, do I have pictures of it? I've got some video of it somewhere. Let me try and pull it up so you can see what actually it looked like when I first did it. I did it as footage for this repair stuff. This is probably going to have sound. Let's turn the sound off. Didn't hear me waffling in the video here. Where is it? Okay, here we go. What's fun in the video? Yeah, it's these two bits here. So we shove this up here. And go to OBS because I can't see what's going on. Right, so there we go. This is my 3D printing. And it's too big for the window because I dragged it in the bigger window. Right, so that's the frame, which is obviously I've already printed. And that's the LED translucent section in the middle there. Right, and I'm going to go down to a different video because it shows it better. And that's what they actually look like. Okay, so that's the actual enunciators. Right, and you can see they're translucent, which is why I chose this material for the way I think. You make a good diffuser, and then it should actually spread the light quite nicely. I thought that it would work quite well, and it has worked quite well. The issue I've got is obviously that the I then painted around the outside of here. And that had a negative effect on them. So it actually, sort of worked in a little bit and stuff like that, and it it um, it doesn't. That's why it doesn't look as nice. Do I have a another clip here? To show. Yeah, that's a bit more. That's the frame. Yeah. There's a frame sitting over it. Not there. All right, so. Gives you an idea of how she built it. But uh, the actual outcome wasn't quite as good as I wanted. Concept is right. Execution, not so much. <laughs> yeah, so I. Got his windows open, just trying to close some stuff. Okay, th thanks, Dave, for dropping by. The actual display film that's in the front panel isn't really changing the brightness that much at all. It's very, very slight. Um, so the orange is basically going straight through. It doesn't look any worse with it in place, basically. Um, so you see it's still going, but you just see it there, you've got reflections, of course. So reflections off, maybe. 
My mouse cursor is right at the top of where the reflection is, so I can't see if it's gone. Yeah. Right. So, with it and without it. So, there's not really that much difference to me. I can actually see it better with it in place from this angle. So, yeah. So, I think the concept is good, but the execution was a bit crap. <laughs> so what I may even do, I mean, I'm tempted to just make it again, um, but obviously then I've got the issue there with those digits back to front. So I need to check all these enunciators to make sure they're correct. Make sure the ones that are supposed to be on are on. So let's just move this out of the way. Let's have a look. So let's do ohms. And I can't see an end thing. That's all because it's OL. Error OL doesn't lot doesn't light up. Let's shove that in. All right. So we got the ohm symbol is lighting up. Barely. The K actually writes up pretty well normally. So the K is on now. But the ohm symbol was really bad. So mig ohms, the mig ohms is lighting up. But again, it doesn't look very good. So, I mean, the brightness just isn't really there. If I turn this off, you might see it slightly better. Maybe. It's, it's, it's only barely there, you know. So back to there, the K's on now. But the ohm symbols are really, really dim. But I think that's lighting up over here as well. I think it's also doing something wrong. Hold on. Let me just put these films over here so I don't lose them. Do something silly with them. Let's have a close look. What's actually going on here? I can't see which one's on. So the percent sign is on. So meg and percent is on. Instead of the ohm symbol. So percent and ohms. Let's have a look. Which ones are they? Let's look at the manual. Uh, well percent and ohms are supposed to be, just did you hear, ohms and percent. Which is G and A again. So A and G are back to front. Right, so at least it's consistent A and G are both wrong. Let's see what else is wrong. Uh, so, what else can I measure here? Cow. I could check the cow light to make sure that one comes on tonight. Let's get the cow key. It's got a seal on the back, still got a sticker on it. Not anymore. Okay. So many volts comes on. Volts comes on. That's interesting. AC and that one. Hold on. So IC volts. I'm getting mini volts AC. That's right. Okay. Okay. That's right. Because those are transposed. But I'm not seeing a cow symbol. That should be bringing up the cow line. Cow symbol's not coming on. Is it not going to cow? I'm sure it's had to do with turn the key, I'm sure it is. Hmm. Oh well, um, 
yeah, so there may be some other issues as well yet. Don't know. Um, what else can we do? You can't do current, it doesn't have that. Ratio, that button there. It does have the ball. Maybe it doesn't have the ball. It's got a rear input ball. Does it have ratio? No, so I can't do that one. It doesn't have ratio. It's only got rear input. So I can't do that one either. So there's some lights here I can't actually test because I don't have those modes on it. DB. Try those ones. So that's D and B. Yep, they're both lit up. That's correct. What else can I check? Hmm. I could just push the test button, couldn't I? But that light up everything, it might not actually tell me that much. Oh, we'll get error three again. Yeah, okay, nice. Right, let's do a test. Trying to see. I think the microamp symbol came on. Got to spin this around to me. Now the actual digits, because I changed the layout as well, it's not the same layout as original, so it doesn't do it as a block and another block. They are intermingled. Let's just try and see what's going on here. It doesn't help, but I can't see what buttons I'm pushing. <laughs> right, turn those off. Right, test now. Which button was that? Full fun. No, actually, I think everything's coming on. No, everything's coming on. All those indicators are working. So that is actually at least all right. Era 6 and Era 7, not worried about those. Might be because I've got that plugged in. Maybe, and I might have the wrong. Um, so on, should be a two wire, shouldn't it, for testing? Oh, no, bloody no. <laughs> Let's do it again. There you go. Now it's passed because I had the jumper in there. Right. So at least it passed the self-test too. Right. Let's turn this off for now. And you couldn't see a damn thing I was doing if I didn't change the screen. <laughs> This is why I built an auto switcher. I got to finish. I got to finish building this thing properly. So I got the keypad on there to do the zoom. Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah. Well, the because I tried to get the LED centered underneath the digits, on these under each character, they do kind of work. They actually lined up quite nicely. Um, I'm also puzzled about why the plus and minus are lighting up. They're not showing up either. But it could be because I've got my resistance values wrong. Uh, it could be I've got these 1Ks as just being way too big, and maybe I should be making those much smaller to increase the drive currents. Um, I mean, 100 ohm for two LEDs, and that was I put in a 150. My 
my hunters about right, isn't it? I think they should be showing up something, but they're not showing up at all. So I need to look at that part. So I've probably got my base resistors are too too big. I just took a guess. So if I do something with those, that should help that, I suppose. In fact, if I were to not have this first one at all, this is something I haven't considered. So these first ones, they're already in series with the resistor. They've got the 150 ohm resistors in series which drive the digits, so drive the segments. So that probably means I don't really need to put this in here. Because that will drive up to 20 milliamps. Well, I do 0.6 volt drop. six volt across there. No, I have to work it out. So we're losing four and a half volts or so across the resistor. Yeah, maybe that's the problem. I have to think about that part. I obviously have to fix this regardless of what I do with the other enunciators. If I do put an LED in there, and I still need to resolve that part as well. Um, stencil made from PCB way. Yeah, the thing is, they've got um, uh, I'll show it. Um, yeah, because we're actually dealing with lettering, and you got sections which are enclosed. You have to have something to support the middle part. You know, which is why I did a 3D print because that way you got a positive image, not a negative image. And doing a negative image on a letter is not easy in a situation like that with doing cutouts. If you've got a positive image, that's easy. You can just make something and put it in there, which is why I did the way I, I did it. Right. I'm heavily leaning towards using an OLED, very heavily leaning towards that. Um, because I think at this point it will be simpler. Right, um, this can all go now actually. Yeah. Close those off, show you those. Did I change anything? No, I didn't. Always have to think. <laughs> uh, right, so in the Arduino code, we have those two which are definitely swapped over, so that is not ohms, that is percent. So that's curious, there must be an error in the manual, it has to be an error in the manual. Um, and that is um, ohms, ohms, come on, what can I type ohms? I'll push the right button, it'll help. <laughs> ohms. Uh, whoops. Pushing one buttons other place. Ohms not percent. So there we go. So at least in here it's easy to fix. I'll tell it to look. That's a similar to generate for those digits. Um, I mean laser cut. Laser print possible, laser print might be better. I've still got the frame, right? So the reason I built the frame as a separate piece was to make sure that if I needed to do some other approach, such as an overlay, then I've got a frame already designed. All I've got to do is just print another one. And that's literally 10 minutes, if that. Well, it's not something not very big. Or maybe it's only five minutes. It will not take very long at all. Um, so I have the option to just make another frame and then put an overlay over the top, which is why I designed it that way. Rather than having it as one piece, that's why I did it as individual, so I've got some flexibility. Um, yeah, so the electronic manual says the same thing as the physical manual I've got here for 1061. So maybe the 1061 is that way, maybe the 1062 is the other way. 
maybe it's because of that, but this is a 1062 manual, but the um, page here, uh, get it, right by, it says 1061, and this matches what I've got in my physical manual over here. So maybe that's what's wrong. Maybe the 1062 is different. You know, maybe there's a subtle difference there between the 1062. But I think the 1062 is basically the same thing. It's just basically got all the options built into it. Or more options built into it by default. So, or is it 1061A and the 1062 are basically the same thing? 1061 is one digit less, isn't it? But you can hardware, we can change the firmware and get all the digits, I believe. Um, all right. Hey, Kim, how's it going? Been a while since seen you. Try see what you're saying here, helmet. Hold on, let's try read it. Have I got a supply side wrong to the LEDs? Um, the anodes of the LEDs go to the digit one anode, All right? So, digit one on the original display is just. A number one symbol it's not a full digit it's just a one or two segments of a one okay so I, I then obviously I, I use a full digit for that instead so it's using the one as those two digits but in the actually I'll show you the manual I, I can explain a bit better uh, what page was that 50 something was it there's my notes um, 58. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. 57. <laughs> okay. So here, digit 1 is just the two bars of the 1, the plus and the minus symbol. Okay. So as in on page 180. Uh, one so segment E I think that is does a plus segment D does the minus so it's individual so it does one segment per enunciator I suppose and it does the one as a one um, which is the B and C All right so you see here these have got two designations this has got three designations so the ones which do the extra digit have an extra designation for them um, yeah so what was i going with this i forgot more saying oh yes that's right so yes it's got the common anode with digit one so it's all using the same digit as per this bit here. I'll start to zoom back out a little bit. So that is one digit. So it's using the same common as that one. So obviously my those transistors aren't switching on correctly. So the common anode for the LEDs in there are the same as that one. So that should all be correct. So it's obviously my switching is not working correctly because even when I did the test, then the LED test on the front, um, they didn't come on at all. So I think my drive design is not right for that. I'm thinking maybe my resistors are too big. Yeah. Anyway. The values I've got there should be enough to make them light up. I, mean, I know when I test it manually, I've put, well, here's my bench power supply, and I manually powered those individually right so i did the i put the positive of the supply onto the 
anode common of the digit here, which is, well, that digit there, um, which is shared. And I could then individually power the LED segment. So I could, if I hooked up to the, on negative supply output to the resistors, which fed each digit section. So I want, you know, the pair, I'm just going to open key code again so I can play over. So in here, so I put the positive power supply onto D1 here, which is the only common, obviously you can see, and then I put my negative onto this side, driving um, 2.1 volts, and they lit up, and I put my negative supply onto this side, driving 4.2 volts, and all four lit up. So that is working. The actual LEDs themselves are definitely driven correctly from those points, which is from these resistors. So if I put my power supply on this side of the resistor, it still works. You know, or that or that, that side. So that resistor point there is okay. You know, as long as we've got high enough drive voltage. And because one side of that is from five volts, directly onto five volts, this side is from the zero volt side, so it's effectively the drop of resistor only. Um, powering it. So it can't really be much wrong. There has to be something in here which is basically resistors. Yes, yeah, so I've got because the segment drive is a is a is an NPN drive effectively, right? So it's driven low to be on. So when it's being driven low that so when D comes on it's being driven low that turns that transistor on which pushes that high which is then turning on the NPN transistor to drive the output there low instead you got that? Um, that was the plan anyway <laughs> uh, yes yeah, so I had to do a conversion so I could do that stepping you know so it converts to PMP and then back to NPN again. But yeah, I'll probably have one of these resistors wrong. Most likely this one. I could find out. Yeah. I can access those resistors. I can actually just bridge across that resistor which drives this. Because there is that other 150 ohm resistor on the drive circuit. So that will buffer the current. I could just bridge those and see if they come on. What do you reckon? Let's try it. Small tweezers. Need to be in DC volts, which I think I am. I think I am. <laughs> is it? No, is it? Yes, it is DC volts. So that should be doing a plus symbol right now, and you can't see what I'm doing because I'm an idiot and I didn't change the screens over. So I left these lights off to try and make it easy for you guys to see the top of it. So, which one was it? It's these two in the middle. These two in the middle here are the two resistors which feed the LEDs here. So one's plus, one's minus. I don't know which way around it is. There's a short one out and see what comes on. Nothing there. Nothing there. So those are not changing the display drive exactly. So let's look at the inputs, which are 1Ks. There's 1K up here, and there's another one just down here, which is actually just below that shield. 
which could be annoying. Hold on, just make sure I've got the right ones. Uh, looking for R1 and R4, which are the, yep, that's the ones I was looking at. I basically mirrored the layout, so it should be fairly straightforward. So let's try this one first. And nothing there. Let's try and get to R4. And I'm seeing nothing there either. So it's not those ones. So there's some other ones here, which is the ones that go between the PMPs and the MPNs. Shorten them out is probably not a great idea. That will cause an excessive amount of current flow. Let's do it anyway. <laughs> Just click it on. Nothing there. And this one. Nothing there. So those aren't working at all. Well, that's interesting. See so if I do a negative voltage input, and we'll see if that does anything. Negative voltage input means reverse it. It's on hold, it's not helping, maybe. Alright. So that's now doing a negative voltage. And there's still no NICI there. So let's short these ones here again. Nothing. I don't know which around these are. I think the top one was the one I actually want to be messing with. So that didn't change anything. I'll we'll change the drive level. Nothing changed there. Same there. I did one between the resistors, transistors rather. Nothing there. So nothing's happening by shorting them out. Which is really interesting. I expect something to happen. Hmm. Definitely curious. So that's something's going to require some more investigation. Yeah, so the actual, um, I've checked it manually using a power supply. So the power supply I substituted as the drives and just did it manually with the power supply. And that was, um, that lit them up. So I'm sure the LEDs are correct around and that sort of stuff. Um, but no drive. Maybe they're not DNA. Maybe there's something else. Maybe there's something else. Maybe they're not supposed to be DNA. Maybe they're another error. Could that be it? I bet that's what's wrong. I bet it's the wrong segments. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is going to require some more investigation. Most definitely. Right. I think I have to scope around the area and see what's going on. Check timings out. Scope the digit. Check for the digit coming on. And check the timing with the segments. So if I can then see that there's a segment which comes on, which I'm not expecting to be on, I'll know it's wrong. That wouldn't take too much to hook up, actually, would it?
Yeah, that should be fairly easy to set up. Okay. Um, let me think. I might do it now. Just to find out what's going on. Which scope shall I use? I've got three scopes here. I can't decide which one to use. <laughs> uh, let's use the Let's use the four channel signal and use this one much yet. Now I also need to clip onto a negative right line on here as well. And I've got to do this shit carefully so I don't blow things up. Um, let's see what I've got here. I'm pretty sure I can use negative lines in there for reference. It's all floating. Should be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Oh, which pins are negative? Uh, oh god, it's down here somewhere. Where is it? Negative. Pin 5. That's not too bad. Pin 5. 5. Is that one? Negative reference. Which I now need to try and get a probe into and stuff. I'll clip the oscilloscope onto that. Probes. Which will get entangled up, of course. Okay, nothing went horribly wrong when I hooked it up, so that's probably fine. <laughs> All right. Turn this waste and fall off. So, what digits do I want? Digit one. So, if I make the yellow digit one, so make that the drive for the digit, which is pin three. My settings on here. Do we want to turn that up a bit? One volt for the division should do enough, barely. Two volts division. So pin three might no, I don't like that. Let's um, get some more grabbers on here. Use these. Uh, what's something better to use? Not really. I don't. I don't have an idea. Where are they? That's behind everything, of course it is. This is when these little Dupont cables come in handy. Because you get some uh, male or female Dupont cables, you can use those to plug onto these headers, and then you can plug the scope into that. Very handy. I've just got to find two. Here we go. So the orange for that one. Is that been there? And we'll see how digit you want you want uh well yeah one what uh D and E we're looking for. The ones that's supposed to be on. D 
D and E are right the other end. So D is pin uh, 20, uh, 54. So two in from the end. Or third one in, should I say. Third one in is that one there. So that is D. So this should be coming on, or rather going off, at the same kind of timing. This is messy, anyway. See around here, sorry. Up. All right. So I want to turn on channel two as well. I'm definitely seeing activity, but I'm not seeing much in the way of voltage on that D line. I'm expecting to see. Oh, I've got. Um, I should check. Actually, I've got AC coupling. That's why. So I'm not seeing much. DC coupling would be helpful. And channel two DC coupling, full bandwidth, ten times probe. Let's check all this stuff because it's something stupid set up. That's set up right. That's set up right. That's interesting. I'm not actually seeing. A big 5 volt offset there. Alright, well, let's show you what I'm getting. As odd as it is. That's on, that's on one time, so on 10 times on that one. That's what's going on. Okay. That makes more sense. Okay. Not getting very nice triggering anyway, we'll change the view so you can see what I'm talking about. There's the scope in the distance there. So the yellow line is the digit and the other line, the purple one, or pink, whatever you want to call it, um, that is the D. And they're basically mirroring each other. So they're coming low together at the same time. Just a single single capture. So you're watching jump jump around everywhere. Um there's a where is it? There we go. So they're basically mirroring each other. Now the purple one's at two volts of division. Let's put one volt of division. There you go, it's more accurate display now. So we're getting two and a half volts difference between these levels, basically. I could use cursors and work it out, but yeah. Um, or math function even. But I'm just looking at display. That's about two and a half volts between those two lines. As messy as those lines are, they are pretty messy lines. So it's obviously the whole time that is on on that digit. It's so it's stepping through each. Um, that's it. Wouldn't be sitting through each segment. It's only purely noise on that as it's doing that digit. So 
and at this point here we've got a big difference here this is sagging down on this one so I, I don't know if it's actually switching individual segments at the same time or whether it's going through them all actually one two three four five it's only showing five steps in here it's a little bit curious why it's so noisy it's not quite the waveform I was expecting to get mind you this probing and stuff probably not helping that much that's a little bit curious okay well You know, I can get this particularly well cleaned up. Not really. There's quite a big spike here. Do you want to trigger off that? Yes, I can. That's a bit more interesting. So now you see stuff jumping up and down. Curious. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I need to probe the transistors and see what's going on with the drive. So that's what's going into the display board. So there is definitely a voltage difference there going in. I'm just wondering about this a little bit right now. I'm just thinking. That's not a very pretty waveform. You can see all the switching noise in it. Very interesting. I'm just thinking what else I could check just there. So that's D, let's check E, which is pin number 46. Right, let's try and find that one. I think it's down here somewhere. <laughs> that's helpful. Uh, where are we? I don't have to count. There's two, three, and two side by side. Right. Gap of three and two by side by side has come off. It's not down here, it's up here somewhere. Three and two side by side. I think it's that one here. Oh, no. Yeah, okay. And that's the e digit which basically looks the same but the e segment let's try another segment too shall we let's try the a segment because that shouldn't really be doing much just want to do it for comparison which is two down from that one so that'd be that one there that's the a don't look any different. So you can see the level is changing very slightly as it's going across each digit. It's jumping around a little bit, but this is just curious, this part. Um, what speed are we on here? I'll do that some hold off the line here, actually. It's 500 microseconds of division.
let's change the digit input. I'm just, I'm just trying to familiarise myself with what I'm actually looking at here. So that's two over from that one. So that's that one there. This is the next digit over. Okay. And if I put this one on there instead, yes, I don't have the negative hooked up, but it's come through the other lead, so it should be good enough. If I don't short on something. That's interesting. Hold on, what's channel 2 on 10 volts division? God, that's not helping, is it? That's more like what I'm supposed to be seeing. Right, bloody hell. So that's comparison between digits. And they're not centered though, so yeah. But I overlay them. Yeah, it's overlaid. Yeah, so there's one here, that's on, this one's on. So it's definitely switching. Okay. Why am I having trouble interpreting this? I shouldn't be having this much trouble interpreting what's going on. Stick it back on there. So the input going low. So when that digit there goes low, this is going low here. And all this other stuff in this ignore. So that's all we really care about is this one right here. So that says it's low. Right. Go back to the other one, which I think was it that one there? Probably not. Maybe it's that one. Might be that one there. Yeah, so that's low at the same time as well. So that one's high, that one's low. So it does look like they're switching correctly. D was the second one. Have I got the right one? Yes, I have. So, yeah, okay. So that, it's definitely driving those digits. On that zero, on that on digit one, he's definitely trying to drive it low. So it's turning them on, or trying to turn them on. Okay. So let's have a look at the actual transistors. So this is the first one, this is the uh, PNP transistor. So we'll look at each side of the resistor first. That's one side. Hopefully you can see that okay. So that is also looking at this bit here. Try and make it a bit better. Right, so that's one side of the resistor, and that's the other side. Those are basically looking fine. So transistor legs, I don't know which legs these are, I don't bloody remember. So that side is mirrored, is it, or is it completely off? That's going completely off. What's the pin on these bloody things, I don't remember. Let's put up the bloody diagram. <sighs> so one side should be the digit the same. Yep. And 
where's the board layout? Don't know what pin it is, just look at the board layouts, it's easier. Right. Board layout. So there's the transistor here. So D1 is there, right? So that's what I was looking at here, R1. So let's look at this leg here. That's the collector. Emitter, whatever that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, collector. Because the emitter's on D1. Collector. That's been driven low. And that looks reasonable. One volt per division, so it's about two and a half volts being pulled down. Then it goes through the resistor, which I don't know which side it is. Uh, okay, so left side is straight from that transistor. Look at it again. So the right hand side is what's feeding the NPN transistor. Interesting, it's floating around a little bit. Okay, so that's the input. Let's scroll down. And so the drive is the bottom pin, so that's pin 3 of the NPN. Okay, so pin 1 is 0 volts, it should be anyway. So pin 1 is 0 volts, and there we go, 0 volts right there near, so I've got it all dragged down the bottom of the screen. So that's the input to it. Well, this is an NPN, so that should be pretty high, shouldn't it? It's not pretty high by much. Ah, hold on. Yeah, this transistor's not turning on very well, is it? So this is the output of the PMP transistor right here. So there's the drive, so it's exactly the same as the other one, it's overlaying, as we expect. There's the input for the segment, so that's, that's digit overlaying, that segment which is pulling low, as you can see. It's looking a bit weird though. Um, the output It doesn't look right, but you expect to see a different voltage there. This, I think, is wrong. That's not one. It's really cool. Then 200 millivolts division from the baseline here. All right. This is the. That's the gate. So, it's like it's collapsing. We'll say it's about 400 millivolts, down to almost nothing. Hmm. Could it be these transistors aren't right? Because being a PNP, this output here should be turning on, that should be going up. So this first transistor is not turning on.
because there's definitely load here. You pull down to turn on the gate. The emitter is high, gate is low, that should be high. It isn't. Okay, that's what's going on. Something's wrong with that transistor. Maybe it's not the right pin out. Uh. Okay, now I can, can read your comments. You probably told me the same thing, I just figured it out myself. Because <laughs> I'm a bit behind like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking pinout might be wrong. It might be the wrong device. Should be a PMP transistor. It should be. Maybe that's what's wrong. Okay, well, that's something to do with later on. We don't have it right now. I can fix that later myself. Um, but at least we know that's not working. If I short across those terminals on that, that should turn it on then, shouldn't it? Let's try that first, eh? Let's see if I can just short it out and turn it on. It's a little bit of a bodge. Not the best thing, but... Um, yeah, <laughs> it'll just slow down the supply if I, it, if I get it wrong. So we're short between the um, collector and emitter of that PMP transistor. This is not the best thing to be doing, but it should light up. There is nothing lighting up. Now, the next question is, did I get my transistors back to front? Did I accidentally put an NPN where the PMP is supposed to go? <laughs> uh, I wonder now. I'm wondering if I've done something stupid like that. Let me check on here whilst I short this out and see if I can see a voltage change. I'll see nothing changing there at all. What about on the resistor? That's not see much going on there. So I would have thought by pulling this high, like I'm doing right now, the digit would come on. And it's not. Hmm. I've got my transistors mixed up. Maybe. I did have them labelled, I'm pretty sure I did them in the right order. <laughs> I did one pair first, well I did one type first, did the PMP first and the NPN. Or vice versa. I'm suspicious I've done something stupidly wrong there. I'll figure that out later. Yeah, okay. Uh, back to this. 
so yeah, I was just basically following down this chain over here. So what I was shorting out, not like everywhere, is I shorted between here and here on that transistor. So that shows the digit put voltage straight into through this resistor into the base of this transistor to turn that one on. So that should have been been turning the enunciator on, because here it is over here. So the NPN comes through, powers these two digits straight to the D1 line. Okay, so it well, turns those two on. So it's turning a negative. It should be turning negative on, and nothing was coming on. So. I wonder if I've got those two transistors back to Frank. Have I swapped those over? Possible. That might explain it. Um, yeah. If I short the I could confirm something else. This might work. Um, also, I'll make sure I've got this right in my head before I blow something up. If I short across that transistor there, that should turn the digit on. If I short directly across pin 1 and 3. That turn the digit on, and it's still going through the resistor, so it should still be safe. So between, oh, I hate the way it zooms. <laughs> I don't expect it to. I'm really used to get it. Need to get used to that. So one or three. This is zoom short between those two, and they actually let the digit come on, regardless of what the transistor is doing. Yeah, that will at least minimise some of the confusion, I suppose. Right, let's try it again. So we're watching for that bar there lighting up. If I can get onto it, there we go. I saw it for a second then. Go on. There you go, that's lighting up. Probably can't see it too well, but it is lighting up. So, yes. From this point on, it's okay. But the idea of this is it gives it more drive. But even that is not looking great, to be honest. Can you see it on camera? Yeah, you can, just about. So, yeah, that is working. So, if I do the same thing on the opposite side, and I need to make sure I get the right pins. Then I should see the positive come on. So that is where? Here. Uh, one through again, that's right. Just making sure I get the right pins because the thing rotates around and I don't want to short across the wrong thing. So between there and there, yet yeah, the positive comes on. I don't know if you can see it. So yeah, that is indeed working. So it's time to do the transistor switching. Right. Did I put the wrong transistors in the wrong places? It's entirely possible. I doubt I can read them either. Not when it's in place.
Oh, that's interesting. So I'm going to use one of my lighting things. It didn't, doesn't come on. There's got something else that I need to fix. Let's pull this plug out of the Mac. Alright, let's see if I can read these things. Okay, 2A is for the PNP, 1A is for the NPN. Are they correct? Yeah, I'm big using my nerdy goggle thing. So 2A was the PNP. That's 1.8, which is the NPN. So, okay, why isn't it working? Is that because it's a KST 3904, not a 3904? Is that what's wrong? No, because the 3906 the one isn't working. Now these 3906s, I think I got these from China, actually. Thinking about it. Yeah, this is the Chinese set. I bet that's what it is. Shitty components. Maybe they're not the right parts. Maybe they're mislabeled. Well, damn. That's inconvenient. do have a whole bunch of different ones but it all came from the same supplier. I've only got 3904s which I trust. I bet these aren't PMPs, I bet they're bloody NPNs. I bet you. Well the pinout's different. Right, I'm going to have to think about this. Find something else to use. Or buy some parts from a reputable supplier. Oh, is the pinout wrong? What do you reckon? Is the pinout wrong for this part? Uh, this is massive, let's make this smaller because it's VR screen. Right. Is that pinout wrong? Is that what's wrong? Uh, let's do a research. Hold on. It's probably supposed to be a 2SA. Um, was it? 3906. I should put the word data sheet in there again, shouldn't I? A listing, come on, where's the dollar? Where's the pinouts? Here we go. I'm guessing it's 2SA. I could be wrong. Might be KSA. Actually, I'll try doing KSA. Could be. Or 2N. Could be a 2N. That seems more likely actually to win. Right. Should have written the numbers on in full, shouldn't I? Come on, load. It's taking forever. Uh, okay, what we got? Is 
it'll be this one here. So that, as relates to that, is wrong. Is it? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong part. Hold on. Look at the white transistor first, Scott. Come on. If I can scroll, it'd be really great. Okay. Marked as 2A, yes, it's a 2N3906. It says here the marking's 2A, so that is the wrong pinout. I think. Hold on. Base. D1. Base. No, it's the wrong pinout. That's what's wrong. The footprint's wrong. Okay, that explains that. Wrong footprint. What a pain. Um, this makes it a bit smaller, shall I? Something. I can see it. So that pin near the base should be going. I've got D1, the pin 1, which is emitter. C is there, collector should be going to there, that's correct. The base of the metro swaps over. That's why it doesn't work. The footprint's wrong. Well, shit. <laughs> Okay, footprint's wrong. Now we know what's going on. Damn it. Now these NPN transistors, I've used these before myself um, in other projects, so I know the NPN transistors work. I say doubtingly. Um, should I also check those? MMBT3904, that'll be the code, wouldn't it? MMBT3904. So that's the service mount part number. Let's check this one too. Pin one is base. Seriously, this one's wrong as well. Now this is the first time I've used this part in KeyCAD. When I've used this before, I used Eagle, and obviously KeyCAD's footprint isn't right. Oh, mind you, that's based on a 2N3904, not the MMBT3904. Maybe that's why it's wrong, and I've used the wrong footprint selection. So, pin 1 and 2 are swapped over on both parts. Well, okay. Awful parts are wrong. Dead bug them. Well, yes, one of those. Take them off, flip them over. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Inconvenient. Not a total disaster. I have to fix this on revision 1.1. If I ever make any more boards, I may not even make some more. But I'll fix it in the revision at least to get these footprints right. Rather, these footprints right. Um, 
Yeah. Oh well. It'll be these designations. One, two, three. That is pin one. So that is the correct designation for footprints. So obviously it has the incorrect symbol information. Oh well. New being convenient. The wife of generously bought me a coffee before. But I almost spilled it then. Almost spilled it. Okay. So I've got two issues. These transistors are upside down. <laughs> I don't have anything else that has the same footprint. If I've got something which has got the same footprint as this, I could have swapped the transistors out. So maybe it won't be down to the transistor, the Chinese parts at all. Maybe the Chinese parts are actually okay. The issue is that KeyCAD has the wrong information because I probably chose the wrong part. Most likely, that's what's gone wrong. Um, I do have a bunch of other service mount transistors in there, so I'll swap those. I'm going to worry about them now. I will fix it and I'll sort that out. And then hopefully the digits will be bright enough. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Inconvenient, but never mind. Kick kick has several pin number alternatives. Okay. All right. Well, obviously, I've chosen the wrong one. <laughs> uh, probably is. Footprint. Oh, no. Which one will it be? Would it be reference? Is it reference? No, that's the number, isn't it? Um, probably symbol. There's a symbol ID. I bet I've got the wrong symbol. So, transistors, BJT, BJT. Do I, does it have these MM things in here? It does. Let's try one of these, shall we? Oh, look. P1 and 2 are swapped around. Oh, for God's... Right, okay. Yeah. There we go. I changed... I chose the wrong footprint. I chose the wrong symbol. <laughs> Damn it. That's what happened. Oh look, now it's right around. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Um, change MMB uh, 3906. There's different ones in here showing up. Which one did I choose before? Let's do the other way. I'll try to. Try to do a shortcut, that's another one. No, I regret that. Uh, T is after M, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. Alright. M, M. Here, somewhere. MBT, 396. Change it. Oh, look, that's fixed as well. Damn it. Okay, well, at least the next revision I'll do, if I ever do a revision, will be correct. Transistors. The rest of it, I think, is it? Uh, come on, let me pass it. This scolding is so touchy, right? What is it? MMBT. 
Actually, I'll just do this, can I? I think I can copy paste that, can't I? Well, that one's fixed. Damn it. Paste. Oh, look, that one's fixed. There we go. <laughs> oh, man. And the PCB is also going to be wrong now because I've changed footprints around. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be okay. Well, how do I do How do I get this to update that break in the whole circuit board? Uh, is that going to trigger it? Do that? No, apparently not. Oh, let's save that. At least these are now correct. We can close the schematic part. Uh, actually, I need to change those enunciators, don't I? Before I close the schematic part. I need to change these around as well. Um, oh, that's a pain. I'll, I'll do it later on. I'm going to do it now. It's going to take a while. Yeah. I'm sure not the first to find this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, in Eagle, I'm familiar with it. I didn't check. And I should have checked. And that's, it was purely me not checking. Um, because it's the first time I used Kai, Keycad, Keycad, I think I pronounce it. A Keycad. I think called it Keycad, really. Um, because it's the first time I've used it, I was fo so focused on trying to learn how to do it. Um, I think I've neglected to check things which I should have checked, such as having the right footprint <laughs> or the right symbol, which then generates the right footprint. How do I update this? Come on, someone stay. I know this is linked to the schematic. How do I update this without breaking all the links I've already got in here? I wanted to change the footprint for that part. I will do, eh? I need to change that. Uh, update footprint from library, change footprint. It's a standard SOP 23. Um, Close that. Is it changing the linking? Pin 1 and pin 2 should be swapping around. It should be showing it. How do I get this to refresh? Since I haven't had to deal with this particular problem before. I would have thought doing this would have said there's a problem. It's not saying that it's mixed up. So it's obviously not updated from the schematic. How do I do that? Anyone know? That's uh, library. Nets. Read net list. Is this going to break it completely? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's warning about the transistors, so that's good. Test footprints. What does that do? Rebuild ball connectivity, is that what I've got to do? It hasn't changed any linking on here, so let's do that, I guess. Oh god, let's put up all this stuff. No, don't do that. Why did it do that? Oh, has it, has it moved everything and busted it? Has it busted everything? Hmm. 
not everything. Why did it break our diet? It's just weird. Hmm. Oh, I see it be fun, isn't it? <laughs> uh Well, I just did something. <laughs> but it didn't change this. It's still wrong. It broke this stuff, didn't fix any of that. Properties. Footprint. Change the footprint to something else. Um, where is transistors? Why well, don't I see it in the footprint list? Was it on a SOT? Was it? Package SOTS SMD. It should be the same package though, it shouldn't change. It's just the. Uh, why would that be wrong? Let's do it anyway in case it triggers something. Yeah, I didn't change anything, but that's fine. Mm. No. <laughs> oh my god. This is going to be fun. I'm not going to worry about it now. Oh, this is going to take forever to sort this out, I think. So I wanted to do netlist in a schematic rather than. Ah, oh, yeah. Hold on. I have to re export it, don't I, from the schematic? Move off of that. Put it away, didn't I? Schematic. Netlist. Generate netlist. That's what I'm doing wrong. Actually, what I might do is close it and reopen it and. Do it again because I broke this PCB layout. So if I quit everything without saving, hopefully it will go back to where it was. Hopefully, where the, the dialog boxes? It's disappeared. Hold on, I'll go back to this until I'm going to quit our I can and now it's all locked up. I can't get to the thing. Where's the? Okay. The prompt is save and exit, but it's on the other screen, and I can't click it because <laughs> it disappears when I let go of this one. Uh, hold on. When I drag this window, it pops up down the bottom. Uh, seriously, like it's it's a bug I found in Kika. If you got a window open, I don't want to save. I need two mice. One to, one to hold this in place and one to clip the dialogue. Uh. Oh god, that's. Now I've got it off the top of the screen. Oh god, let's false quit this thing. False quit, okay, can boy. Yeah, I gotta do it. <laughs> Let's try this again. This shit is schematic. Make sure it's still okay. Yes, it is schematic. Still good. Export netlist. Or generate netlist. Let's do that again. This is what's gone wrong. I missed this step. This is why I had trouble going into KeyCAD originally after being an eagle for so many years. Um, is those little extra intricate steps you have to make sure you do. Now, hopefully the PCB is not broken. Okay, not broken, not until I do this netlist thing up here. <laughs> Read cart netlist. Yeah, and it broke some stuff. Okay, 
I've got no choice but to redo these LEDs. Okay. Right, now we're there. This is up to date here. Here we go. Uh, it's about jumping through some hoops. Let's save it there. It's kind of worked. I'm in KiCad. I can't use the latest version. As I was saying before about using um, W Premiere 5.5, I can't use the latest system versions. Only on 10.12 OS. And because of that, I can't use the latest version of KiCad either. <laughs> so this is an older one. Um, which version is it? The tell me up here about KiCad. I'm on 502. Right, and that's the most recent one I can run. So, yeah, another small inconvenience. So, that's alright, as long as I know I have to do that, I've got those steps to do. Alright, now I know, that's the first one I have to do that. So, this is the first, another first. But at least this is now showing the correct things here. And I need to just put these diodes back where they were before. Um, yeah. They'll disappear behind the silk screen, I expect. Oh god, it's done as a group. You're not supposed to be as a group. Come on, grab that one. Come on, let's grab one of them. Footprint, fine, grab that one. Move it. Where's that one go? Down here. And I've got to flip it. Yeah, this is fun. <laughs> uh, where's that one go? I can't see because of the print. That goes kind of... Uh, yeah. Really? That's not supposed to be flipped. Oh, that one there. goes there. goes here. Or here. That's why it is. Okay. We'll show it. There. Footprint four. Move it. Put that round. Shove that here. Yeah, close enough. No, yeah, come on. Select it. Yeah, this is a bit of a pain, but uh, oh well. At least it's not something I have to do all the time. Just one off. There we go. That's how it's back in place. Save so that. I'm not too worried about silk screen markings being disappearing behind this white patch I've got here. Uh, transistors. Yeah. At least these are easy to fix. I hate the way it jumps around like that. Come on, that's not like the other way. I was zooming out, but I've been in, that's weird. Yeah, here. I have to swap these two pens around. Well, that's a little bit inconvenient. Um, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. There can go. Yeah, do that one. Oh, cancel. I want to delete it. These have to cross over. How am I going to do that? Dead bucking sounds easy now. <laughs> I'll put it back. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd like to use the newer version of KiCad. I mean, I'd like to try and keep software up to date where I can. But right now I'm restricted because my operating system is too old. Because I have to restrict it to being old because of using Premiere 5.5. Because I don't want to pay monthly for doing video editing. Of course I could actually have a dedicated machine. I could change it so I have this machine just doing video editing. And I have another machine for doing my daily stuff. And then I wouldn't have to worry about it. I could then have a up-to-date machine. But... Um, haven't done that. Okay, what am I do with this damn thing? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not quite going to work, is it? Um, yeah, because then I think of sideways. Maybe that could work. Would it? Uh, I might have to chuck another wire in. That'd be annoying. I want to have a bit of pad under there. That's ridiculous. What's that doing there? Yeah, that's a bit easier to see now. Okay. Well, that's a bit irritating, isn't it? I mean... That almost works, but I don't want to snake a track in between the pads of the transistor. I mean, I probably could, but I don't like doing stuff that small. Yeah. I mean, if I did it that way around like that, and then ran the track down in between those other two pads, that might be the way to go. Though. That's probably the tidiest way of doing it. Let's do that. Oh well. Where's the um the windows are massively big. Tedious. Right, pad, uh, track width 0.25, nah, 0.75, these big tracks. Big tracks. That's not a big track. That's not a big track. Hmm. Oh, I want to layer, that's why it's wrong. What'd that layer change? Back on there. Why? Why did it change? Oh, I'm on bloody tall. Oh, damn it. Yeah, you know, oh, oh, you choose the one that does tracks, eh? <laughs> Here we go, there's a one mil track. Do that, it's too massive. It's massive. Okay. It's better. Look how close that is, though. What the hell? Squeeze a track through there. Hopefully. Chuck it straight on there like that, I think. No? This is disaster as well. Yes, anyway. That's got to go. Oh, I've got that blob in there. Oh, this is fun. Yeah, 
Yes, yeah, so that's right. I haven't changed this transistor yet. Oh, so I have. That's right. The footprints are right. I've already changed the transistors on the schematic. So net this is correct. So I've got to flip this one around as well. Yeah. Um, this one is just a ground, so it's easy. I've got to turn it sideways even. Don't have to do anything, actually. Just rip up that pad. And that blob there, which is there for some reason. Oh, I've got blobs in there. Um, bring that down to here. That will change to a ground plane over here. We should be good, hopefully. Um, yeah. Five from there to there. Yeah. <laughs> I actually need to figure out how to do like the regeneration of the of the flooded um, grip plane. It's going to give me errors. I know that's fine. So this um, that needs to go. Because I only, only know how to do that by um, why is that going there? Like that. There we go. All right. So you know to redraw the flooded plane, like in um, an eagle, you just do a, a click a button on the side for I don't know what it's called now, but it updates it straight away when you click that. I need to find the same thing in here. I haven't actually tried clicking on stuff randomly though. Is it that one? No. No. <laughs> Hit the B key. Oh, well done. Thank you. That's better. Um, was this the placement? Yeah, that's actually not the best just there, is it? Look at that, it's a bit messy. I don't like that little wrapping around thing there like that. That I don't mind, I think that's alright. Well I don't like that but that looks a bit messy. Mm. If I bring it over slightly it should make it disappear, shouldn't it? Because the clearances then go too low. There's a lot of stuff I still need to learn in this program. Okay. Excellent. There we go. That's slightly better. So that's one side done. <laughs> this isn't quite what I plan to be doing today. Redrawing schematics. Uh, and ball layouts. But I do like the way it points these big arrows to things when they're completely wrong. I do like that. Not like I've had it completely wrong in here. Ever. Specific pads, I've been doing specific pads as well. Oh, okay. I've done like a generic, you know, clearance for the whole um, board, you know. Um, I haven't looked at individual pad stuff, I didn't we'll do that. That's convenient. So this needs changing. That track, that's got to go. And that track there, that one, that's got to go. That track there's got to go. And the same up here for that transistor whilst I'm doing this. What's that track there for? I don't know, that might be for the... Okay, no, I don't know. Oh, it's a little blob, this one. Right, get rid of that. Get rid of that one. Okay. So... Let's tug it up. I'll see what's going on. I should probably flip that resistor around. 
Oh, sorry, that transistor. That's got that point there. So if I flip... These are mirrored. Why, is it, why didn't I see that issue on the top one? Oh, because it already was that way around. Okay, all right. Oh, God, it's jumping around everywhere. I need to get used to this. So I'm going to flip this around. And I'll grab the part. We'll do that a bit. And then rip that out. Rip that out. Yeah. Oh, fun. <laughs> fun. It's fun. I'm telling myself it's fun. And we've got to change these around as well. And I have to get this eye over there. Um, yeah. Two o'clock, I've been for ages, and I've run out of coffee again. Right, so what I think I'll do is I'll finish this off myself instead of streaming this. I don't know if you guys are interested in watching me do a diagram. Um, and I'll go and have some lunch because I'm starving as well. I'll let you guys all go, and I'll finish this off and fix this off, and then I'll fix the main board in that. So the board I've already got in there, I'll fix that up. I'll flip those parts over, make that work, and. Um, do an enunciator. So I'm as I'm now not at work for two weeks. I could do another live stream during the week. So I might work on that stuff today. Maybe I might spend some time with wife instead. She might appreciate that. And then um, I'll do that Arduino board with the OLED display. I build that up. That shouldn't take much effort. And I'll mock that up and we'll put it in place. I'll probably just leave the existing as it is and just put this over the top so you can see how it looks. Um, and I'll go from there. So I might do another live stream tomorrow, maybe. We'll see. Oh, yeah. Hey, Ray. You got it just as I'm finishing, Ray. <laughs> I've been streaming now for how many hours? I don't know. <laughs> I'll start at eight. So what's that, six hours? Six hours now? Sounds like spring, yeah I am, it's summertime now. It's uh, it's currently 29 degrees in here. About 25 outside, but the computer and the gear and stuff makes it a bit hotter in here. So, yeah, sort of getting a bit hot. Dark winter there, yeah. I actually prefer probably autumn. Early spring where it's quite cool. I don't mind a little bit of rain, actually. Being English, I'm kind of used to it, I suppose. But um, I actually don't like it too hot. I'd rather be cold and put more clothes on than have to try and cool down. Head to head stuff, nice stuff. Well, rain, basically, what, Ray, what you've been missing. Did you catch the last live stream we did a couple of weeks ago? I don't know. Um, I've got a dash over here, which you, if I change the camera views, I'll cover it, recap it. You can see it standing up on its end there on the bench. Um, I've built a new display module for that. In case you didn't miss it. In case, well, in case you did miss it. Okay, there it is there. I built a display panel. Had a PCB made, designed a panel, and I'm just working through the little bugs with it. So I found an issue with the footprints I've chosen, which was what I was looking at just now. The footprints are wrong for the parts. Um, I had the right parts, but I did the wrong footprints chosen because I used KeyK for the first time. I had to learn how to use it. So that was a bit of an issue. Uh, back to here. Right, so that's what we're looking at these footprints now. I'm just looking at the diagrams here, and just I've changed the parts in the schematic. Now I've got to change the parts on the board itself. So if I do make another version, 
or to remake it, then I'll have the correct footprints there, and that sort of stuff would be good. Um, right now, it's going to patch up the boards I've got. I've got ten boards here, which is way more than I need, really. But I think if I get five, the difference between five and ten is like almost no difference in price. So just get ten. Um, obviously, it's sponsored by PCBI anyway, so it didn't cost me anything anyway, but because um, it's sponsored by them. So had that issue. I had the enunciators, which I three D printed a display section for, I suppose, for the individual EDs to shine through. Um, that is working, but it's not working as well as I'd like it to. I'm not happy with it, so I'm thinking about putting an OLED in place. I've got a little 0.96 OLED, 0.96 inch OLED, which will fit in that spot. And I'm looking at trying that. I've already written a bunch of code to run it. I'm not quite finished the code because um, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to end up using it or not. Um, I've got the basis there for the code, it's basically 90% there. Um, and so this means wiring up 10 inputs onto the OLED, well, onto the OLED, we know to run the OLED, so it knows what's going on. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got a few little things to work on there, but it's, it works, the actual digits work, it's all good. So, okay, thanks for dropping by, Peter, I'll catch you next time. Well, yeah, exactly. At least it is on the way to working display. I mean, the actual seven segment display is all working as most of you would have seen if you were here. Um, you, you would miss that, Ray. But the actual displays are working, so you can actually read voltages and stuff off. But the enunciators are wrong, and that's what I've got to sort out next. Is It looks like on the series manual, they're swapped over. So there's two enunciators, one for AC volts and one for milli, the milli symbol. They are transposed. So although I did it exactly as per the diagrams, um, it's wrong. <laughs> so uh, yeah, stuff happens. So never mind. So that's how I need to sort out as well is to figure that out and and get that sorted out as well. Um, but yeah, not a big deal. It just needs for tweaks. I could change it quite easily on a circuit board just by changing some jumpers. You know, I could just cut a track, make a jumper. We all need to go done, not a big deal. Um, but if I even use that unshared panel, if I don't use that panel anymore, then it doesn't matter anyway because the Arduino will be powering the LED or the, the OLED display, which will then display it instead. I'll just do conversion inside the Arduino, it doesn't matter. So, um, so I'm going to fix up this bit I've got right now, which is the plus and minus symbol, which is what I'm looking at here the transistor to drive that. So that's what the issue was there, that the wrong footprint. So the, the base and emitter wasn't transposed, which is a shame, but yeah, well, um, so it's not a big deal, I'll just fix that, and then at least I'm trying to get the plus and minus symbol working, hopefully it will be bright enough, if it doesn't I may have to look at some way of boosting it, I'm not quite sure how, um, If I need more current through there, I'll have to look at how I can do that. I should be able to do it. I mean, I've got a 5 volt rail going in there. Yeah, I'll see. I'll see. I could potentially use the Arduino to run it. So instead of it being multiplexed like it is currently yes this is a, this is a plan so I've got some spare pins on the Arduino so what I could do is also sense digit 1 rather than just digit 10 11 I could sense digit 1 as well and have a because I can sense yeah I'm sensing all the inputs as well so I'm already sensing the segments which give it a plus and minus display so I've only got one more input line which is segment 1 or digit 1 that will allow me the Arduino to then sense the plus and minus symbols being turned on and that could then have an output which toggles, only toggles, plus and minus. Is the plus and minus always on though? Some, I think some ranges don't need, don't always have them on, so actually I would have to have them individually switched. But that's only two outputs on the Arduino. So that's three pins I require to make the Arduino control these instead. 
I have three pins. I can do that. So if this can't drive it well enough, then I can use the Arduino instead. And so that way, if it's not multiplexed, it'll be on for constantly on, which makes it much brighter. That could solve the brightness issues. Yeah, that'll make that much brighter as well. It can run it much harder. So it can't kind of brighter. Solve the transistor problem. Yeah, okay, so that's the plus and minus symbol sorted out. Oh, that's easy to fix. And then, say, the enunciated part, which I'll show you, actually, Ray. Um, long zoom out of here. If I can get KeyCAD to do what I want, which is to stop jumping to the middle. Right. So this is the enunciated section here. And if I turn off the... Well, if I click on the mask, you can see I've got it laid out. So I've got the white patches here to reflect the um, lights from the LEDs. What I've done on the board I've got, and then I actually painted it white because I actually, it wasn't until after I ordered the balls, it was like a day later after I ordered them and I started making them. I thought, oh crap, I should have put white around the LEDs to make them reflect. <laughs> so, this is a revision 1.1. 1 .1. <laughs> um, revision 1 ball, which is what's in it, I painted it white to make it reflect instead. So, anyway. But the M and the A are swapped over, they're transposed. Alright, so. All I've got to do is change the feed for those two diodes and that will swap those back around. It's not that big a deal if I use that display. But oh, it looks like I probably won't. So right now I've got this 3D printed panel here. And um, if I go to an OLED then um, it will just go in this spot directly over the top of it. I'll just, I could take the... I might probably even leave the LEDs in place and just leave them there. It wouldn't really cause any harm I don't think. If I just take the bezel off the front of it, the actual... Um, the frame here thing with the unshat is built into it, which I 3D printed. Take that off, and I'll just put the eyelid straight over the top. I wouldn't actually have to mess with any of that. Maybe. But that might be beneficial to take the LEDs off, because it might improve the brightness for the rest of the segments, because it's not detracting from it. Um, anyway. So, old options anyway, but the um, couple of little things to work out. Not a big deal. But anyway, it's a display. Uh, View, 3D viewer. Here we go. Let's do this, shall we? Yeah, 3D viewer. Where's the display? Where's the parts? Should be those showing up there. Hmm. Never mind. Um. There you go. Kind of shows it. You can see LEDs anyway. <laughs> and the uh, the pinhead on the back. I still like the 3D viewer, that's a really nice feature, I really like that. That's excellent. Okay. Yeah, so the video I did, um, so two weeks ago, last live stream, it was a five hour stream. So, yeah. Um, but that went through, um, I think the first half an hour is just waffling on, you know, having chat and having a chat, you know, talk to people. So, you certainly skip the first half hour at least. Um, then I look at the Datron, try and do some troubleshooting and find out why the display isn't working, there's no display. Um, other enunciators, you know, buttons, light up, stuff like that, it seems to be basically working but there's no display. And I track through trying to figure out why the display isn't working, then I finally take off the front panel, spoiler alert, and find the display is cracked in half. Um, yeah, I don't, I, there is, because I made these, these seven segment display footprints, I made these. Right, so I made these myself because the only other ones that are in KeyCAD, the footprints weren't quite the same as the devices I purchased. They're very slightly different. And because they're butted up side by side, I wanted to make sure they're exactly right. And so these are perfectly lined. Um, the original KeyCAD ones were different. The actual pin spacing was slightly different as well. The pad spacing was slightly different. Things like that. So I had some issues with that. So I made my own footprints for that. And, um, and so that's why there's no 3D model. Um, It's not long, but only had a, well, I've been going for six hours now. <laughs> Add them together, it's 11, there we go, I beat him. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so, um, what was I saying? I've forgotten now. 
Oh, that's right. So yeah, that's when I took the panel, panel off and realised the display is actually broken in half, which is why the display didn't work. And then I started reverse engineering how the display driver board works, how we could modify it in order to put LEDs in instead, because it is basically a multiplex display. And um, yeah, so it's it's you know a, a lot, I think probably an hour or so, maybe two hours of the last video was reverse engineering the actually trying to figure out how to make this ball and um, yeah so this one has been basically me doing the actual conversion actually doing what we figured out we needed to do I've implemented it that's what the first part of this video was about today the live stream and then actually doing the conversion putting the thing in there and trying to find out why certain things aren't working right but the actual digits, the seven segment displays, that part works perfectly. Well, almost perfectly. There's a couple of little segments which go dimmer under certain conditions, like if a certain display is happening, a couple of digits are a little bit dimmer. Well, a couple of segments are a little bit dimmer. So again, a couple of segments are a little bit dimmer. Um, but it's only really minor. It's not that obvious. I think that's fixable, because it has capacitors in there to on the gate drive which I'll show you as soon as you haven't seen it uh, let's give it this I should say those data sheets actually um, here's the code for the Arduino which I've written for to run display so 200 lines of code so far quite obtuse code but that's what I do um, where's the oh did I close it Close. There we go. Right. So, page one eighty. So I did a reverse engineering all this stuff, and in here we have this is the segment drives. So the top bit here is the digit drives, which had resistors in there. I've taken all those out, so all the digits receive the same amount of voltage and current capacity. And these are the segment drives, and I've changed these resistors here to give sufficient drive to run the LEDs. Now, what it's got is these um, capacitors here in series with the gates of all the trans switching transistors. So I think these capacitors are causing um, some drive issues, minor drive issues, because these now have to switch on harder, I believe, to try and drive the current we need. So I think these capacitors may need beefing up, they even need to be increased or removed altogether. Now having them in there will be beneficial because it should help with EMI. You know, it should reduce electrical noise because if it's switching hard and it's going to be because it's running at two kilohertz and it's switching off, you know, on off two kilohertz, that's going to produce EMI. So I think they've done this to reduce EMI. Um, so it's not switching hard, it's switching a bit more softly. So that's my theory anyway. So I think leaving them in there is beneficial, but I think they're switching too slowly as a result. If I reduce or increase these capacitors, is that going to help? Maybe. If I change these resistors here, that will certainly help. Um, I mean, I may be reducing these to you know 500 ohms or something like that. Double, double the drive, maybe that will do it. Just to give it slightly more drive power to each transistor, and I think that might solve that dimming issue. But I'm not too worried, it's only really minor. I've got bigger things to worry about right now. Um, once I get those other issues sorted out, then I can look at the drive and see if I can get those digits perfectly matched. They're not bad, they're pretty good. It's only really slight, and um, I didn't even notice it until someone pointed it out, as Ian mentioned, that hey, one, one of the segments looks a little bit dimmer. And it's only under certain conditions, so it wasn't always there either. And all digits are showing you elsewhere and stuff like that. So. Right. Um. This is one we you have removed that inter intermediate bias network on digit lines. Yes, the um, this thing here. Right. So that was the minus hundred eighty volt rail, and I pulled that jumper out. So that is no longer minus 180 volts coming in. 
that's now zero volts because it's linked from here. All right, so that bias line there. So I believe that's linked to that. Well, I hope it was anyway. <laughs> this is another connection I missed. I don't think there is. Um, should I double check anyway, just to make sure I've missed something stupid? Five volts there. That's the five volt rails there. Negative supply. Five volts there. Digital connection. Yes. Yeah, I think it's all fine. Because what I call this minus one seventy five. It's only minus one seventy five relative to the five volt rail. All right, so it is one minus one seventy five. But of course, you got plus five volt rail here. That relative to this is 180, so I don't know why they call that 180. But um, I'm sure that is disabled now because that R41 is was leading to that jumper here. It was leading to that. So that, was, that side of the jumper went to here, which comes through here. There. So that diode and everything there, that can stay just there. That's just a 5 volt rail effectively pulling up, I suppose. But then it's reverse bias, so it does nothing because that's now 0 volts. So 0 volts this side. 5 volt across here, the 75 on the 75 volt diode, so that will just be sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So it should be fine. Uh, oh, you mean these these ones here, the AN the resistor networks, they're still there. That was quite a high resistance value. I think there were we did look at that before and we realized that they were quite a high resistance, so it didn't matter. Um, these ones here, AN2, AN3, AN4. Let's have a look at those, I'll tell you what they are again. Hold on. But the resistance was so big, we thought it would just have no, no effect whatsoever. It would be insignificant. Uh, it's 100k on that one. Is it? I'm looking at the wrong one. Look at my board, it'd be helpful. Um, That is a 330k, and they're all the same value. They're all 330ks. So 330k across there is going to be having negligible effect. At least I think it will be. No, the original display was a gas discharge display. Um, I'll show you actually. Let's change here. Yeah. We will put it here. It is. Here's one half. <laughs> um, you know, I'm getting shot for you. Yeah, one half of the display broken, and there's the other half. As you can see, it's got the nipple on the back there. So it's a real shame, but uh, oh well. And trying to get a display for this would be near impossible. Not necessarily impossible, but it'd be expensive and hard. And I thought, well, let's just make a replacement because I can. I have the means to do so. So yeah, that's where we're basically at. So this time, last time we did all the reverse engineering here, figured out what we need to do, figured out it was just the values and that sort of stuff, and like, realised that this is basically acting as a voltage divider and biasing, because these were, you know, was it 1K or so, other up here, I think. So it's doing biasing on those, and these ones here were more of a divider. But yeah, they weren't really doing much. 330K shouldn't really matter that much. Um, Uh, digit line went to intermediate voltage. It went high on digit slit or low voltage with lots of ripple. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, true. Talk about the scope readings we're getting, yes. So you're thinking that because, because of these resistors in here, it's pulling the digits around a little bit. It'd be easy to take them out. I mean, and just resistor arrays. I mean, I'll just pop them out. It's not really that big a deal. I could desolder them pretty quickly and take them out. 
Does it need to be there? No. Then it'd be, right now, because I've got that link in there, that'd be pulling down to zero volts through a 56K. Yeah. Because think about the minus 180 now, it's now a zero volt rail instead, okay? So that's zero volts here, 56K, then 330K through those. Actually, that's the point. We've got these. I saw I took those resistors out the night. That's right. All those resistors there are gone. So those are now straight in. That's right. Get my head in the right place. So the resistors go to the transistors. They are all gone. They're now jumpers straight through. So we've got 330 between each one. So that's 660k between digits. Could that have an effect? Maybe. It's not too bad. High current, sorry. Um, not when it's off like that. Maybe it'll be having an effect. So, hmm. I'm wondering if it, maybe it's pulling it down. I shouldn't be pulling it down. Suddenly, when it's when it's turned off, and I think it's not being used, it'll be getting pulled down. Then that shouldn't really matter. But the fact they're linked together through here may result you get a bit of bleed through because you've got a fifty-six k here. So it's not truly a zero volt rail here, and so that could be pulling that one up slightly. So if I linked R41, if I jumped that out, then that would have to be zero volts here, then, it, then one digit wouldn't have any effect on the next digit. And the same for the segments. Segments will be the same. But that means it's also doing a pull down on the segments, so it's trying to illuminate them slightly in parallel with the transistors. Would that be helpful for the transistors to help them to stay on? Be positive biasing, like give me they might give me ghosting the way. But those also three thirty K, so it shouldn't matter. I think if I just get that one there, that R forty one Jump that, that'll make that zero volt rail down here, which makes all these pull downs. Which means on a digit side, it shouldn't matter. There's no interrelation then, because they can't possibly affect each other through the zero volt rail. And the same for the segments, they can't affect each other either, but then it might be trying to turn them on a little bit. But 330k, that's not going to do anything as far as making them come on. So I could probably leave that in place. Um, Yeah, the capacitors I'm thinking about might have to go. Um, can't get the tubes anywhere, and there's drivers at ICs of fifty dollars each now. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so I think if I think the quick way to do this is to just bridge R forty one. I made that a link. That makes that rail zero volts. And it takes away the ability for one segment or one digit to affect another one. That I think that's a quick fix. Yeah. Okay, so I think R forty one needs to be bridged. I mean, I could absolutely take these networks out. They're doing nothing now. They're just making sure they're definitely turning off. Would it also be beneficial for these transistors to not be driving those? Would that also mean slightly less drive currents that are turning on a bit better as well, actually? 
So in this case, they're working against it. So it's got slightly harder drive, which means they might be turning on quite so hard as easily. Negligible, but a little bit. And these ones are helping to pull it down, which is helping the transistors. What else have we got here? No, I'm not seeing anything here. It's definitely a negative rail here. Nothing else. Tax in here to worry about. No. So, I think if I pulled out AN3 and AN4, that would make these transistors work slightly better. And then strap that down to zero volts. That would help these ones. Uh, C7 is short circuiting. C7. C7 is over here. Is that the one you're looking at? Or are you looking at something else? Things aren't always um, clear. Yeah, I'm just thinking it might help it just a little bit, you know. Like I say, it is insignificant amount because you're talking about 330k. It's nothing. Not at these kinds of levels, you know. It's um, that's why I didn't really worry about taking them out because I thought, well, they'd probably be fine. But it would at least keep clean all that up, wouldn't it? It would get rid of all that yeah, potential there. But this one, I'm tempted to leave there because it will help drag it. might just help these turn on a little bit easier again it wouldn't be much but it might just be a little bit to help the brightness yeah okay right I was gonna wrap this stream up no, I was gonna wrap it up half an hour ago so we'll wrap it up and I'll go and tinker around with this thing and sort these problems out we've had and just tune this slightly more make some slight changes here but that, uh, yeah that's all good um, so I'll probably live stream again during the week it may be tomorrow, it might be later on I'll do a notification of an upcoming stream like I did for this one um, so you get a bit of a warning beforehand um, once I've decided what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it, that sort of stuff and um, yeah, once I, I think once I've got something, report, something to report done these changes we talked about just then fix that problem I had on the plus minus digit, fix all that got that going Got the code done for the Arduino and the OLED display. Got that to wired in. But the benefit of that, I've, I've got all those um, header pins sticking out the back of that PCB, which I'll just plug onto them, which means it's really easy to wire in. So I'll at least temporarily plug the Arduino in, wire it all up, and do testing without hard wiring anything. And if it works okay, then I can hard wire it properly. Um, so I'll do all that, and then I might do another live stream and just see how else. Because who knows what else is wrong with this? I mean, I know it reads you recapping. You've got some noise going on there with the readings. So power supplies are probably dodgy. I know the analog board has issues with capacitors. AV Datron I've worked on so far. Two or three of them, whatever it is. Not many of them. But they've all had the same issue, those capacitors being bad. So all that needs doing as well. So I may do that on the stream. We'll see. Also depends on what my interconnection is going to be like. Yeah. Um, well, Ray, I haven't been doing any live streams for ages, but I did one a couple of weeks ago, and before that, it's been a long time. It's been months, I think the last one, was it July or something like that? Um, it was, well, it's been a long time since I've done these streams. I've just been so busy with other stuff, and I didn't really have anything I really wanted to do a stream about as well, so... Oh, stupid YouTube unsubbed you. Oh, is that what's going on? Yeah, subscribe again. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't like the way they do that. They shouldn't unsubscribe you. They should, maybe they should prompt you say, are you still, are you sure you want to still follow this channel while I'm saying, oh, you don't want to watch that anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, the pulse drive. Yeah, exactly. So, obviously it's going to be like a ramping up on those inputs. And so, you be able, I could probably scope it. The scope's still turned on. What do you reckon I measure it? Um, segment display, so that's the... Let's look at this. Eh? Let's actually scope it quickly before I, before I um, can this stream. So Q11 stuff like that, or whoever they are. Um, which set is it? That's this lot here. Right. So they are the segment drivers. So I probe these, and we'll try and see what waveforms we're getting on those bases. Are they? Um, I don't know the pinout for those parts. Which ones did I say they were? Five, 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 oh. Uh, better look the pin it up so I know which pins I'm looking at. Transistors. Uh, 2N, wasn't it? 2N, 555, 0 were these segment drivers. Right, so base is pin two, middle pin. Right. So you can also check to see what's going on with the outputs as well. So let's just pick a transistor and measure them. So the collector is pin three. So I measure pin two, pin three, and we'll see what we get on a scope, eh? That'd be pretty easy to do. See what's going on. And man, it's getting hot in here. Must be getting about 30 degrees by now. Um, let's just change views so you can see what I'm doing. Once I've organised myself. which I need to reference to zero volts again. Um, hmm. <coughs> zero volts, let's just go off the back of the display. Which was that pin there, I think. Was it? I don't remember. I better get this right. <laughs> uh, Hold on. Let's have a look. Um, Keycat. There we go. Well, it's a open. That's good. Pin 5 is 0 volts. Not the one I put it on. This is why it's good to have checked. That would be 0 volts. Feed that through here so I can probe. I'm sure I could find zero volts on this board somewhere, um, but I'd rather just go to something I know is definitely the right one. I should have got the other probe because that's the one which is actually set up for it. Come on, come off. Just change camera view so you can see what I'm looking at. Here's the scope. So, can I get into these okay? Yes, I can. So, was it pinned? Two and three, I said I wanted, wasn't it? I can't see the dog anymore. Yep, yeah, pin two and three. So pin two is the main one I'm interested in. Let's 
so a whole bunch of digits on it. So you as much on time as possible. Don't worry about that touching something. Alright. Zero that. And zero that. Let's turn channel two off now, I might use it anyway. Well, that is very noisy. That's very fast, but and there's a slope. That's on the base. Why am you know, I not getting a decent trigger on this at all? I'm trying to get some pick up a noisy spike or something. Well, that's not really particularly conducive to telling me what's going on. Let's try this one. Not much different. Let's try pin three. It's just very, very noisy. Right. Oh, why spring the ice cream? Can you put it back in the freezer for now? Oh, um, not much. No. Mm -hmm. Till I finish. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm seeing. Uh, okay. Averaging makes it a bit easier to see, doesn't it? So that is on the collector of one of the pins. So. Let's put that on the base. That's just noise. Just trying to catch it nicely. Not really getting in nice spots here. Anyway, let's do a single capture. I'll give us something. So there's a way from over here. <laughs> let's, try, let's try and get a different capture. There we go. So interestingly, it's what we're getting. We're getting that. And that's not quite what I would have expected to be getting. I would have thought I'd be getting something different to that. I would have thought I'd be getting a... Hold on, which way is this? MP or PNP? This is PNP, isn't it? I don't know. It's... Um, it's not really doing what I thought it would be doing. Lots of noise in that one, also is it also really busy. So each pulse is obviously each digit is doing. So it's actually quite a good one to show it. It's like a run pulse here. It's like it's building up. That's quite interesting. So it's like pulse, pulse, pulse. Each time it's getting slightly higher. Yeah. Hmm. Requires more investigation. That's not what I thought I'd be seeing though. I thought I'd be getting something different. So, what I thought I'd be getting 
would be a rising pulse. So, gosh, this is so much for wrecking the stream up. <laughs> because this is going through a capacitor, I would have thought that would be because that's negative biasing right through the diodes. That'd be pushing negative through here. So that's that's interesting. So this means these can't turn on all the way either, because this is oh, I'm getting it wrong. I'm talking, about, I'm talking shit. That's not right. Forget that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the um, I would have thought because it's going through these capacitors, I would expect to see a rising edge, so it's start, so it slope up as it's as the capacitor charges. In fact, it's kind of doing that, but it's impulses. It slopes up impulses. So yeah, maybe that's why I'm getting different display intensities because as it's pulsing each one, depending on how many pulses it's doing on that particular segment, the voltage is rising, and as a result, as the voltage rises increase the drive to transistor which increases the brightness of the segment so yes getting rid of these is likely to be a good idea but it may increase EMI I'm wondering if increasing the value substantially will do the job as well am I worried about EMI really is it realistically an issue potentially because I've done multiplex displays and other things before and uh, created so much noise, it's been incredible. A bit unlucky with them, so. Alright, back to the chat and read that for a little bit. Once I find out where I'll put it. Uh, yeah. Let's read the chat now. Yeah. Okay, Kim, thanks for dropping by, Kishler. Hope you're still here for me to say goodbye to you. Open circuit electronics. Um, this, what you're getting now, is really good compared to what it's there as. You should have been at the beginning. <laughs> I only stream at 720p, I don't stream at 1080 for a start. Um, that camera also isn't brilliant either and that's also zoomed in so it's probably why you're seeing really bad quality on that camera so the normal camera view which you'd normally see is that view and I've zoomed it in by just making the thing bigger in the streaming sort of software to be that big so that would be causing some issues with quality as well um, as far as 144p goes I can't help you there um, Yeah. Um, okay, well, so what I'll do then is I'll look at this again and pull those capacitors out. I mean, I do think it's a bit weirder in there, and I think. EMI is the only reason they would do it. Maybe, but I'll pull those out. I'll put them on one side. I won't throw them away or anything. I'll just take them out, bridge them all across, and then do those other changes we talked about. I'll get in the right window with all the other stuff over here. I'll change all that as well. We'll update all this and see how that improves the quality as well. Right, so for now, I'm going to call it a night, well, a day. It's almost three o'clock now. Nearly seven hour stream, guys. <laughs> That's a lot of talking. I wonder why I thought it was getting a bit sore. Too much talking. So, alright, thanks everyone for dropping by. I'm definitely cutting off now. So, I'll catch you all next time. I'll, so, I'll probably do another stream during the week. Now I'm not at work for a couple of weeks. I can do another stream. So, I will do another one once I've done these little tweaks and improvements here. 
I don't want to do another stream because it took a while to do jump and stuff like that. It didn't really need to do that. So, um, we'll do all this and I'll catch you again next time. So, thanks for everyone. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. If it was interesting. And um, if you're not subscribed and you're watching this video, make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon, that sort of stuff. And, um, hmm, interesting. Yeah, I think the, the capacitor's there for, as DC blocking, basically. I think they're basically for that. Um, to help the gas discharge voltage, because there's 170 odd volts through there, so, you know, yeah. So I think they are not really required anymore, hopefully. So, that will go. I'll take them out. Okay, thanks everyone for dropping by. I'll catch you later. And um, this will be an interesting little project once I finish it. So, I will say, I've been recording video on this thing as well, as I've been doing the, the bits, so... There will be a proper video at the end once I've finished doing this modification repair on this unit. So, it'll be that to watch too in high quality 1080p. And... Mm -hmm. Catch you later. Bye.